I never seen that other nigga Mealy Moore. He was too busy trying to do hide and seek with a detergent. We're gonna talk about it, chat. I came to say hi. I came to say that I want to give a class soon. No, you need a calculator if you questioning the accountant. You need a calculator if you questioning the accounting. You need a calculator if some of these questions, some of these questions is just real kindergarten type questions. And then you try to explain it to your people because you love them and they don't believe nothing you say. For All right, chat. Uh, no disrespect. I'm about to cut Joe because Joe ain't saying shit, man. Listen, Joe. I keep telling you, take the kitty gloves off of these bitch-ass niggas that you fucking hired and made relevant. You got to treat them like grown-ass adults, a nigga in the streets. You got to spank them out. You got to show them what it is. You've been trying to coddle them because you're... And I understand. If I am the person who helped create what is known as, let's just say, the chat nigga universe, and I bring in two bozos, and y'all fall in love with them, and y'all are now hating on me, I would feel at conflict. Because the people who I love and who I've sacrificed so much of my life to gain this audience, they're now fall in love with two other niggas who don't give a fuck about me and also who's publicly trying to tear me down, okay? It's a very conflicting time for Joe, okay? Now, he really should handle these niggas just like he handles everybody else, but that's where I come in, okay? And by the way, Joe ain't telling me to do shit. Man, Joe don't talk like that, man. Please, y'all got to stop with that type of narrative. Joe can't tell me to do shit. If, if Joe couldn't tell me to go to revolt, you think Joe could tell me to violate these two bums or not? No. Anyway, um, let me just play a couple of... Actually, fuck playing songs, okay? I'll pour Henny while we, while we watching. Anyway, the two fucking Stooges finally came out, and they allegedly... Well, not allegedly. They gave their side to this fiasco, this new melodrama between... Joe Budden and his workers. Now, they're saying a lot. And from Cliff Notes, what people said me, I haven't watched it yet. Allegedly, they put it up and they're charging $2. That's eight quarters, if you don't know. We're not paying them shit. We're not paying them 200 cents. You fuck out of here. Okay, we bootleg this motherfucker, and y'all gonna be able to watch it on my stream for free. Okay, so... What was these bum ass niggas thinking? I was about to pay for it. Nigga, I wouldn't give these niggas a fucking dollar if they were fucking homeless and I saw them in the on the freeway and I could be sitting in a raid, the Bentley, the my Uris. It don't matter what it is. I want to give these niggas a fucking coin. Okay. So y'all know I ain't pay for this motherfucker, but hey, we're gonna watch it together. Okay. Uh here we go. This is the Stooges who we already buried somehow. It's the Walking Dead season one. Listen to what they got to say. And by the way, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to cut this off all type of different ways because these two bozos, I'm going to give a lesson. I'm going to give a lesson in actually having some business sense, okay? So let's watch this shit. I'm going to pour up while they're talking a bunch of fuckery. But let's go. This is quick, man. The truth isn't long-winded. It's not... Uh... It's not boisterous. It's not uh, it's loud. Not, it's not to degrade people. It's not yeah, to manipulate this people. Isn't, this it's isn't not a to, smear to make thing. yourself look better. No, nah, man. It's I'm not. not just, let's tell what happened. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. I like, like I said, my karma is beautiful. My aura is, is, is beautiful, man. I'm, I'm just here to just let the people know yeah. the, the truth. And only because there has been so many people over the past going on the seventh year right. of our podcast that have been there and mm -hmm. supported, bought fucking tickets absolutely descriptions let me cut this fuckery off already i'm sorry i, I mean to cut it off this quick. yo chat i just want to put some context behind it for anybody who's about to watch this these negroes well one negro and the other albino bum they work with joe button for six seven years this is year seven for them and it's in a year seven they're addressing things that you should have probably dealt with on day one there is so much hypocrisy in even them getting to this point. I can't play this video, despite what their side is, without reminding y'all of the things that preceded this. Chat. These dudes sat by Joe Budden while Joe Budden tore down a company 
multiple companies, Spotify Complex, and they agreed because their chin was bouncing off of Joe Button's ball sack like a trampoline. They sucked him clean. They sucked him dry every single time. We saw it time and time and time again. When he was giving his story about what went on with Spotify, not one time did they bring up Hesnitz with Spotify. They were just nodding and agreeing with Joe. Let's take my, dis my disdain and dislike for these two bums out of it. These two niggas literally agreed without knowing for years, and now we're supposed to have sympathy for them, for them saying, oh, we're now trying to find out. Tell me that's not ironic. Tell me if, it's not, if that's not ironic when these motherfuckers were talking down on people. If you weren't talking down on people, we could use ignorance as an excuse. But these are the same motherfuckers who had clips like this and they were basically talking about other people's business sense and this was their comments right here. Listen to this. Are not just cool with getting fucked in the ass with no lube. Some of us are not well, just moving I, I, that way. You don't way. have enough fiber. <laughs> By the way, Joe was always talking about Joe. These cocksuckers, Jay-Z's pre -cum, and the albino bump Ruri over the right, they were always agreeing, all while they've never seen a fucking paperwork, a document, anything of their own. It's hard for me to feel bad for you when you judge people for the very same fundamentals that you should have had. It's hard for me to feel bad for you. And by the way, as much as I dislike these bums, I am going to be objective today. Because I come here to give business sense. The reason why I'm going to tell you this, you can't name another motherfucking media other than Charlemagne the God that either got more than me, has accomplished as much as me, all these niggas respect me or not. I, I've surpassed all these niggas. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. So when we talk about business, if it's anybody you should listen to, it's none other than me. <laughs> Those are none of these niggas. <laughs> These niggas, they be complaining about they boss, they pay, they this, they that. You've never heard anything of the like with me. I said what I said. I don't have to include or exclude any names. I told you who. Now, listen to how these two bozos were talking about people's business. And that's the thing. You know me, I talk about sometimes people's personal life. That's why anytime I'm with a thought and a thought like expose me or shit, I got to talk about that particular person. Hey, listen, it's a fair game. It's par for the course. If you play in the mud, you going to get muddy. That's just what it is. But when you're speaking upon other people's business, you should expect people to do the same to you or you better have your ducks in a row. Listen to these bozos talking about other people and then think about their comments. Could it not be applied to them? <laughs> Damn, they didn't even use lube on you, what guy? They had a, yes. They didn't even get you what? They have a glove. I feel like Rory got two clonics in a week before. <laughs> <sighs> and now I don't remember where I was, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because y'all don't need a long rant from us. We 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 stand on and this. So, and this and this and this type of move we, ain't. Here we go. I think it's important for us. This this type of move ain't for everybody either. Some that, of you niggas take take what they offer. Some of you niggas can't just be throwing the office upside down. No, right, that's what you're worth. Take that. Ma Maul is not wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> some, of you are, some of you are worth what they put on the table. Yeah. Don't. Some of y'all shouldn't fuck yourselves over. Yeah. yeah. Take take that deal. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's important because because a lot. If the I. Is it ironic to y'all that these two bozos, Mealy Maul, Jay Z's pre cum, and that other bozo over there, they're talking about niggas not knowing what they're worth and niggas should take the deal, when in reality they don't know their own deal. I'm gonna get into it, but I've always told y'all this was my this is what ruined these niggas' lives. I'm gonna tell you that. You wanna know why they're older than Joe? I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly why. When I started getting at both of these bums and I told them they were, they were workers and not bosses, 
it made them feel like they had to go and check on Joe and figure out their own business, except what they thought were being they were being owners in. They never got no information. They weren't owners at all. We're going to talk about it. Let me just finish this clip, and then we're going to get back to their, their explanation. Uh, y'all are smoking mirrors. Yeah. Y'all not really talented. Um, the irony of that nigga saying that. Joe literally said, I'll be richer without you. If you were talented, Joe would never say that. Joe literally said, I'd be richer without this fuck nigga. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, what, yeah, watch this, uh, Chappelle. Anyway, let's get back to this other shit. And, just, and just we're extremely it. grateful for that. Fucking bootlegged it, I'm appreciated yeah, for. Like, absolutely. All <laughs> people of have it. just always came out for us. And, you know, I understand when people do things twice a week for however many years. Mm hmm you become part of their lives and they want Absolutely. answers. And Absolutely. In some cases, I can't tell you everything just because it is personal and legal things to some degree, but mm -hmm. there should be some actual transparency. Oh, no, we're going to get or, into some personal shit. Or some other, well, you we're know. We're going to get into some personal <laughs> shit. Like, I, I, I'm only doing this once. I'm not a, I'm not one of these guys. You oh, know no, that. this, I want this to be the end of it. This is yeah, not I'm some only, campaign. I'm only doing I'm not this going once. on a press I'm run. Not, yeah, this isn't, I'm not here to smear, smear nobody. I'm not here for that. This is... This is Ugh. just the truth. This is just not my truth, the truth. I think it's important because <laughs> motherfuckers like to say, oh, my truth. This thing is, these things are filled with disclaimers. Jesus Christ. Let's get straight to it. Reporting to Joe and everyone else over there, even though this is easily <laughs> Googleable, if that's a word. It's a word today. Within 30 seconds, mm -hmm. I just popped up on the podcast on episode 20. Right. The original SoundCloud, episode number one. All right, I don't care about this. Let's get to business. Be great. Then you came on the show, seemed to see a number, mm -hmm. friends talking mm -hmm. on what he thinks he could do per month. Right. It's early in podcasting. I say, bet. So I called Joe. I said, hey, I just had a really interesting lunch with Elliot. Okay, what happened? I said, oh, title, they're trying to put together this little podcast division. This is what's going on. This is what they think they could offer per month. Real casual, real regular. Never said yes or no to anything. I was just like, yeah, cool. I'll get back with the guys and we'll talk. Mm -hmm. Joe flips the fuck out on that phone. Yo, what the fuck would you ever talk about this fucking podcast to anybody? Like, flipping the fuck out. I said, Joe, I was talking to Elliot, who's a friend, and I didn't say anything, but okay, I'll talk with the guys. Right. Could have been a stranger on the street saying, yo, give you out two million tomorrow. Let me put this in perspective. Joe's flipping. Yo, it's like the fry cook at McDonald's talking to somebody about selling McDonald's. Are you dumb, nigga? Get back to fucking cooking the fries. The fuck is you talking about the sale of the company, nigga? Some people got no business talking about certain shit. How the fuck is the worker selling the... Come on, bro. You should only worry about the fries. How the fuck you talking about the franchise? Don't make sense. You know why he's flipping out? It's not your job. It's not your product. You don't own it. You might say something or reveal something like conversations. Let me tell you this. And, and I want to give out names because these, these are people who have worked for me and maybe you've seen them already or continue to see them. Someone who I employed before tried and overstepped their boundary and started having conversations to try to put a price tag on DJ Academics, the brand, in whatever capacity. It could have been for Instagram posts. It could have been. It could have been for a consultation. It could have been an appearance fee. Someone who clearly was out of bounds and out of their league in even having those discussions. I don't give a fuck if I told you, hey, yeah, you know, I, I did this like appearance at blah, 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 and this is what I got paid. This ain't your job to talk about. This ain't your job to even solicit. This ain't your job to even feel that type of conversation. You should direct the person to talk to me, the head honcho. That's it. And I'm glad my shit, all my shit just say academics. There ain't there ain't no person B, person C. It's me and whoever, like, whoever comes in, y'all could leave this very second. This is where podcasting probably fucked it up for Joe because people fell in love with the Stooges. But I can understand why Joe is screaming at this nigga. If Joe probably has other things going on, he's setting up. If this bozo possibly set a price, like, I ain't gonna lie, Joe would do it if we got this amount of money. People talk. 
This bum ain't qualified to talk about Joe Budden's business. Bro. Right. I'm going to go talk okay, to the guy. I go talk to the guy. Right. Never said anything. Never went that. Was right. met with just a flip out. Right. A couple weeks later, Joe takes us outside of the Total War studio. Yo, so I got this title deal <laughs> and said the numbers. And then they were exact same numbers, the exact same thing. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, this. there's a lot of people who are sympathetic to these two dweebs because of either, you know, Joe's an asshole. He's an asshole. Joe's an asshole. Like, Joe could rub you the wrong way. You won't fuck up cool. But don't let it be lost upon you that if, say, for a perform, uh, 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 I don't know, a panel, I would charge 15 grand to appear. I'm just throwing out numbers. Anybody who listens to this, yeah, you holler at me. If you want a real price. Anyway. Say that's what I charge for the last couple panels, right? Someone in my team knows this. Somebody asked them like, yo, shit. Blah, 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 blah. Can I get Ak out here? Yo, if I got 15 grand, would he take it? I'm sorry. It's not. You can't make that. You can't make that decision. Already. And we're seven minutes into this video. Ruri is exhibiting the he's exhibiting the notion that he thought he was even qualified to have those conversations. It don't matter. Even if it ends up being what Joe brought back, Joe could bring it back. You can't have those conversations. This is why this whole podcast erupted and fell apart. Because Ruri actually thought he was a boss. Fuck your contribution. You were seen and valued as nothing more than the fry cook at McDonald's. Nothing more, nothing less. But listen, he doesn't get it. So he's missing the bigger picture. I think we had, did we, did we have an argument that day about that? Was that that? No, I, you guys say that was about the title deal, but I don't think that argument was about the title deal. Okay. I think it has something to do with Highline Ballroom or something. I didn't think the yes, title. I don't think did. the title it was, it was, it was ever it was a live argument. show. It was a live show. Because the title deal, you and I thought it was cool. Like, because I think it was for six months. It wasn't like some yeah. crazy deal. It was like, yeah, all right, maybe we'll get some bread. Yeah. And then move the fuck on. Granted, was it a good decision to probably turn it down? Sure. Whatever. Right. No one's ever mad about it. <laughs> right. Type thing. So once those deals start coming in, I'm thinking, well, we should probably just start having contract conversations because when we were thinking about taking the title deal joe and i did sit down and talk about percentages off that monthly title number right which happened i don't care what you think what your narrative is this all happened mm -hmm. we turned down the title deal i think well we should just have that conversation anyways because we're starting to get real offers not just little ads here and there like right fifteen hundred dollars twenty five hundred dollars right like, we're getting actual offers are they mm -hmm. crazy offers no but they're offers so we should just do this because we're all friends. Let's just get a, a, a binding contract between all of us. Right. Nothing crazy, nothing to a specific deal. Right. Nothing to a lump sum of money, just a percentage-based shit. Let's just do that. Mm -hmm. Call Joe, and I say that to him. This was one of the first conversations I'd ever really been offended to Joe, and I've expressed this to him. He flipped the fuck out, called me insecure for wanting to have a contract, mm -hmm. and said, don't call me about this shit. <laughs> I said, I'm insecure because I think we're all friends and I want to have a, a contract since all these deals are coming in. So once right. the deals are finalized, the three of us don't have to say a fucking word to each other. We good. Right. We can continue on with this chemistry of this podcast. Right. But I'm insecure. Mm -hmm. I found that very odd. The same way he psychoanalyzes his friends. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the weirdest fucking thing on earth. Right. You understand just, that just now. Simply, you understand what that energy was about now. Though. This was just the first one. Okay. Got you. This was just the first one. Mm -hmm. Just said to myself, well, that's kind of weird. That's not insecurity. That's just how shit goes. I called before we had any deal to talk about ownership of this podcast. Mm -hmm. Joe said otherwise. We then all agreed we'll do profit partners, mm -hmm. which is fine. If you want to own the IP of this shit, it's, it wasn't even an argument before my lawyer even got in last shit. That right. was a simple Joe and I conversation. Mm -hmm. This your IP on your shit? Okay. But let's just be profit partners. Right. I'm not going to get paid off this podcast. Let's Put some real sweat equity into the shit. If you want to mm -hmm. own the shit, cool. And I won't take away from everything Joe did prior to to start that podcast in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Won't take anything away from that. Never even came in on some, yo, I need to own this shit. Did I bring it up first? Of course. Right. Who the fuck wouldn't? Right. 
Mm -hmm. It's a simple fucking thing. So then Spotify comes. Nick Rosenberg emails me, says, hey, I think Spotify is interested in doing some podcast stuff. <clears throat> I said, all right, bet. I'll put you on with Ian. At this point. Chat, this is a brief intermission, man. Roll up that Ruri runs that black and malls. Make sure y'all got that shit lighting and going straight in the goddamn atmosphere. Uh, these niggas talking a bunch of bullshit, but we're going to break them down like a goddamn fraction. You're hearing entitlement itself speak. When I hear these niggas talk, they sound like bitches. You get them some dick, they think that they, they're value to all type of shit that you own, okay? So I'm listening to this bum-ass thing, but watch, we'll break it down. Spotify comes, we actually have to get these contracts done because now real money is on the table. Right. Not, not what the title deal was, not what any other ad was, not what any other thing that I'm privy to. And mm -hmm. I'm privy to. Let mm -hmm. me make that clear. Shit that I'm privy to. Right. So I hit my lawyer and I say, hey, let's. I'm glad he mentioned that. The mere fact he's. Chat, what we're going to constantly hear is that these bum ass niggas, they're workers. As an owner, you're privy to everything. As an employee, you're privy to selective shit. As it should be. But let's keep hearing this goddamn albino bum. Let's get a contract. I'm not the smartest person in the world, never will claim to be. I'm not a lawyer, anything like that. But when you go into a negotiation with another lawyer, you start at the top with everything, and then lawyers just start taking shit off of what's not going to happen. Correct. So, of course, a lawyer goes in and says, visuals. Visuals now are YouTube. Okay. Let's negotiate. Mm -hmm. They say no. We get into the negotiation. Lawyer goes back and forth with his lawyer. Joe and I speak on the side. One quick conversation. I never brought up YouTube money again. Mm -hmm. Not one time. Never came out of I my think, fucking mouth. I think it's important to, to highlight that. Never came out of my fucking mouth after a lawyer who did their fucking job mm -hmm. and negotiated <laughs> brought that shit up. I said, all right, bet. Okay, wait. So visuals are not off the table. Just YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm cool. Right. I'm never going to hear about YouTube. YouTube for me again. Like, that's whatever. Visual does not just mean YouTube. YouTube's not the only place on earth that does you that does visual shit. But let me let I'm me, fine with that. Let me stop you right there. The only reason why I had a problem with that was because the podcast, yes, did was 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 this was the Joe Button channel active before the podcast? Yes. Mm. It was housing his music stuff, his videos, whatever. But we know what the sus subscription was before we started putting the podcast on there. Mm. As we started putting the podcast on, it became a weekly thing. The subscription started to grow. Yeah, for sure. So that's the only reason why I had an issue with that. Because, I, okay, cool. Yeah, you started this channel. No problem. But I know how YouTube, you get paid each video. Or for so, each video. So here's the thing. What, that conversation did happen between the lawyers. Because I, I know how the YouTube splits work and what, what that is. I'm, I'm familiar with it. Mm -hmm. with a, whatever. So Rory. You've never had a YouTube. You've never done shit. You're not familiar with shit. You're not familiar with shit. This nigga's never even attempted to make a YouTube channel. It's kind of insulting for this bum ass nigga to be like, oh, I'm familiar. No, nigga, you probably read it on a website. Uh, I see the bigger picture. I'm not f flipping about this shit at all. But so, this is nobody, 2021 shit. Nobody's being greedy. I'm saying back then, fuck, I never cared about the money on that shit, nor did I think YouTube. Child, let me tell you this, man. Once I posted the mansion, the Urus, and the R8, these niggas started going crazy, man. They started going crazy, nigga. They probably thought they were, they were supposed to know, nigga. I don't know how Joe ended up splitting all his shit with y'all. I own all my shit, okay? <laughs> Wait till you see what I get next. I see the narrative is people think that we work for Joe and we're employees and we get a salary. That's not what it was. We have a percentage-based contract. Let me run this back again, chat. This is the first lesson. Get your pens and pads out, chat. First lesson in business 101. These two bozos, we killed them last week. This is The Walking Dead, episode one. Rory Runs and Black and Mall's episode. We're going to teach them about business. Let's listen to these fucking idiots right now. 
flipping about the shit at all. Nobody, so this is nobody's, 2021 shit. Nobody's being greedy. I'm saying back then, fuck, I never cared about the money on that shit, nor did I think YouTube had some crazy payouts at that time. Mm -hmm. It was just lawyers negotiating. That's what lawyers do. It's not annoying. It's a simple fucking thing. And this was the simplest contract on earth. Mm -hmm. This was. shit was very easy. It was, not, it was not some crazy back and forth. But according to him, we didn't. We don't know what the contract. We're percentage based. Yes. Because I see the narrative is people think that we work for Joe and we're employees and we get a salary. That's not what it was. We have a percentage based contract. And also people. So we have to ask for accounting because how else will we know what we're supposed to get? We need yeah. to see the numbers. We get a percentage of whatever comes in for the podcast. I've seen a lot of people making, oh, LeBron wouldn't ask Genie. Wrong. Let me tell you bozos this. And I keep, this is why I know these things are still dumb as shit. I'm going to break it down like a fraction. One more time. You are a worker unless you own it. Having participation on profits does not mean you own it. When you own it, you get to make the decisions. This is very important for you to understand. Everybody. I will give you an example. I was due 20% of everything for everyday struggle. Did I own it? No. These fucking idiots been talking ownership while they only had a percentage base, which honestly, that could be to keep it real. Ask Joe when me and Joe's everyday struggle. All they did was trying to fix Joe's gripes was switch. Um, there was a bonus pretty much for ads. They just switched it to percentage based. Not because you have a percentage means you are a owner. You know why? The owner is going to tell you they could do whatever the fuck they want. And this ain't no the Joe defense stream. Because I seen Complex do it with me. I heard the number that they said my first season of On The Sticks was so for. I said, what the fuck? We eating. Then I seen the number that they said, hey, this is the numbers you could look at in regards to the show. And I said, what about the other number? Well, that's none of your business. That came to Complex. Do you own Complex? No, but, but I own the show. Well, we had to move this money here, move this money here, move this money here, move this money here, and then we move this money to your show. You think I could ask them? No, I want to see what y'all did with the other. No, you don't own it. Mealy Maul, whether you want to accept it or not, you're a fucking worker. Rory, you're a worker. Joe Budden owns the product. I just said it. If you own the IP, if you own the business, you own it. That's it. However you get paid, some people might say, and that was a case with me. In, yo, by the way, interesting fun fact. I'm using real life experience to educate y'all. I missed out on maybe 100000 maybe $200,000 with Complex. Because I chose to take a bigger percentage in profits than take a set salary that was higher. So I was, so when, when we compared it all, I told him, I said, if y'all betting all the chips on act, I'm betting all the chips on the situation. I want to be a participant with the profits. They offered or they would have given me more money if I didn't try to get percentage. I'm trying to give y'all real business explanations while these two bozos, yo, Milly Mo, you're fucking 40. Your brother was Biggs who worked with Rockefeller. How could you be this fucking dumb? It looks like if it don't got nothing to do with Tide Pods and motherfucking detergent, your brain don't work. You're not an owner if you don't own the product. I thought when y'all was talking ownership, y'all could say, we own a quarter of the Joe Budden podcast. 
Not that y'all were entitled to a percent of the ads or deals that came in. Profit participation doesn't mean ownership. Ownership means you can't get fired like that. Ownership means you get a say-so. Ownership means you already should be seeing the books. But six years later, this what this whole fucking video is. Y'all are accusing a nigga who, by the way, probably was, you know why Joe probably felt offended, if you really ask me? Because in growing every business, and when sometimes you know Joe been rich, I'm rich. But if I'm working with somebody, I know he ain't got shit. I might have to, I've, I gave you the chosen example already. Nigga, I'm paying you, but I'm taking a loss, but I already got money, so I know you got to eat, blah, 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 blah. Joe probably felt a little offended because when the, for a week, nigga, by the time I'm done with my, my, my three-hour nap that I take every, every morning, $1,500? But think about it. Y'all do a podcast at least that time for once a week. $1,500, that podcast ain't making shit. Yet, he probably got to help pay both y'all rent, transportation, all type of shit. Joe was probably taking a loss at a point. Of course, if I'm taking a loss and we finally get to the point where we're getting a little bit profitable and now you're super on my ass, when that becomes an issue. I want to make this clear throughout the rest of this response that I asked always the simplest questions ever. This narrative of me being this difficult person or this person wiling out, I also have those emails that everyone speaks about where I'm being difficult. Mm -hmm. I don't know how dumb you think I am, but we accounting is not some dumb. shit you send in a five line item in the body of an email. Right. Just wanna make that clear. Right. And when I asked for accounting, I didn't think asking for what's in your contract is such a fucking crazy thing to ask somebody, your friend or not. And on right. top of that, I sit behind the accounting expense. Right. I'm not going to say the company's name because right. it's not important. Right. But they're not a cheap company to hire. Right. They're expensive. And whether they do Joe's personal life, not my business, do not care at all. Nor am I trying to get into Joe's personal life or personal just business outside about, of the pocket. We're just talking about the contract that I we have. I sit behind that expense and it's in my contract. If I ask the simple fucking question of, hey, let me see the accounting. Because it's also supposed to be there quarterly by law. And that's an, and that's another thing. Uh, it, you're supposed to well, we we're, we're supposed to get accounting quarterly. If you want to do it twice a year, that's cool, whatever. But I don't I'm I think fine with that. Right, but I think it don't that, even need to be quarterly. Right, but it I, could I be think once a year. I think I'm that easy people to work with. <laughs> right, people don't understand that this isn't something that just happened last month or March. Like we were trying to just get some type of accounting since 2019 maybe no way way before that I, I'll, all I'll i can remember is 2019 yeah i'd have to look back. like we had tried to get some type of accounting when we had the conversation outside of the studio like yo we never got accounting like what's up what's going on you know we just we need to see what's going on with the numbers and it, it's like every time it, it came to talk about accounting or business it was always you know some negative energy coming from him and that's telling to me, it's like, why are you getting so defensive when we're asking for something that's just protocol in business when you have a contract based off of profit percentages and all of that? Like, th this is this is basic shit we're asking for. And still, by the way, in the beginning when Mo and I were asking, because I initially asked and got back bodies of emails when it came to tour accounting, uh, Spotify accounting, whatever we was. Chat. These niggas talking a lot. That's how I hate these bum ass things. Yo, y'all are terribly at... at, at being orators stop fucking talking so much and not saying shit let me just say what these bozos are walking around these two dweebs never knew how much spotify signed the joe bun podcast for let's put that out there they never knew how much the podcast they were on was signed for at spotify do you see why i took issue with them cocksucking joe when they don't even know how much Spotify gave Joe. They don't know how much Spotify offered Joe. You heard that nigga allude to before. It was what they're privy to. They never knowed. They never knew how much they were getting paid by Spotify. You know why? Spotify never dealt with them. They were dealing with Joe. 
So now they're mad that Joe didn't disclose it to them. Let's be clear. They're mad that Joe didn't tell them how much Spotify signed them to in the first place for the first couple of years and how much the new offer was that Joe turned down. That's why they're mad. But yet these were the same niggas that sat right next to Joe when they said, yo, we got a plan. We know what we're doing. Yo, we we handle business. But y'all was just dick riding. It's come out. Y'all don't know. Y'all are saying we were asking and nigga never told us. Why the fuck was you dick riding then? Why the fuck were you blindly just going along with some shit? How could y'all be trusted? Why should we have sympathy for you? You should have brought it up then if you was real. I'm not going to co-sign a nigga complaining about a company. Here's the thing. Ruri and Mealy Moore, that company probably look at y'all a little bit type of way because you were sitting right next to the nigga while he's slandering them. You should have came out and said, bro, yo, Joe, I ain't going to lie to you. I don't even really know what, that, what they really offer you. We just know what you told us. You, we asked you to see she don't show us nothing. You should have said it back then. Y'all grown-ass men. Y'all not bitching now. What I'm saying is y'all put this out to keep people on your side and drum up sympathy, but how could I have sympathy for y'all even if I didn't dislike this motherfucker that's up on top of the screen right there? Y'all was talking like y'all knew. Now y'all telling us y'all didn't know. What? Mm -hmm. Which, again, was not, was not complaining in that type of sense. Or say, just send over like the real shit when you get a chance. Like, mm -hmm. I understand people are working. That was met with such tension every time I asked a simple question. My naive ass, mm -hmm. nothing's wrong. Right. I'm taking accountability on that. Mm -hmm. I, nothing's wrong. But we took. We, I, I we, also also want to make that clear because that became a narrative, even though it is later on in what I want to get to. I don't think anyone's a thief. We never said I that. Th I don't think anyone's stealing. We, they, they, I never even they, said, "Hey." It was a simple. This is, <laughs> this is missing. Can we just have the accounting? At this point, yeah, we just wanted the accounting. And I, I, from what I remember in 2019, when we finally got it, there was a quote unquote 400 and something thousand dollar mistake. So I don't know what accountant makes a $400,000 mistake. So, but okay, you know, everybody, nobody's perfect. So I, I'm, I'm putting that out there, but it was just a little weird to me. So end of 2019, yes, you are correct in that timeline. End of 2019 is when we got the Excel sheet accounting. They went from the body of the email and then just gave me an Excel sheet with a few more line items. Let's be very clear. In 2019, these niggas are on Spotify. Let's be very fucking clear because, again, these niggas are trying to play victim when they used to talk shit on everybody else and used to talk about they got a plan, they know business and third. 2019, they're on Spotify. 2019, they're basically admitting that they're querying and asking Joe Budden how much money is really coming in because they're on Spotify and you would imagine the way they talked later that they knew, but they did not know shit. This is factual, people. And my high school diploma asked before I sent it to my accountant, which also is standard business. You're not offending your friends. This is just how shit works. I'm not calling right. anyone a thief. Right. People have accountants not because people are thieves. Right. Just because of that. Right. They have them because they need to monitor, monitor their fucking money. Right. I find something immediately. Mm -hmm. And I don't get disrespectful because I understand people make mistakes and nor do I think people are stealing. That's my man. I love him. I don't think he's stealing from me. Right. This is some shit we doing. And I know Joe got a lot of other shit going on. I got a lot of other shit going on. You got a lot of other shit going on. Mm -hmm. People make mistakes. Right. Nor do I. And by the way, nor do I think Joe did the accounting. Right. The people that was hired to do it did it. Mm -hmm. Say in a very condescending, sarcastic tone. Roy came to me and said, it's not the... I don't trust you. It's that I don't trust wealth management. Well, oh, he said the name, so I can say it. Mm -hmm. Fam, yeah. I don't care how condescending you say that. And it, and it contradicts the fuck what you were saying. I never thought you were stealing. Right. I'm trying to understand what the fuck they're doing over here. Because mm -hmm. this is incorrect. Right. And I, and I sit behind this expense. Mad more simple. importantly, more importantly Mad I'm simple. paying for this. Right. Again, these bum ass things talk too much. Let me let me tell you also what I've heard. Because, uh... I was at the, you know what I mean? I was at the gun range, you know what I mean? Doing my little thing earlier. <laughs> Gotta stay prepared. Um, but I heard that this was coming. 
And in having conversations and, and whatever, they're taking a long time to get to the point. These bozos are claiming. I don't know if they'll say it on this video, but they're claiming. This is what they are saying to people, to lawyers, to managers, to friends, to industry aficionados that they believe Joe, they're being really kind of like dicey on if they're trying to call him a thief, but they're saying that Joe owes them money and they feel it's in the millions. Okay? That's what I heard. Okay? Also heard that it probably will go to a lawyer or possibly lawsuits because with that particular amount of money, even more than Ruri, niggas like Mealy Maul, actually I heard he was pressing, niggas want to get paid. Now, just putting everything together because they're talking too slow. These things are... Who the fuck listens to them? They're saying they have a profit participation with the Joe Budden podcast. Not owners, you're still workers, but you're having a profit participation. It's talent. Cool. cool. Now, if you're feeling you're owed millions of dollars, you mean... And I don't know what, what, what profit or, or what's the percentage on the participation. You probably think that Joe has gotten millions of dollars that you have not shared in. Right? Um, I guess that's up for debate. I don't know. I don't, I don't know Joe Budden's business. You know what I mean? I always said that, like, if Joe did sign a contract with them to say they have profit participation in the podcast, I'm going to be honest with you, Joe. I love you, but you fucked up. If you were going to run the business like that, it's your IP, you own whatever, whatever, you should have never offered them that. Because here's the thing, Joe. Most of these deals coming in, and you notice, well, they're coming in for you. They're not coming in because of these two niggas. Again, the Spotify deal, Spotify never felt a need to talk to them. They felt a need to talk to you. Just like Revolt. They didn't feel a need to talk to me. They felt a need to talk to you. Who are they trying to give these deals to? Those people they're talking to. So Spotify was trying to give you the money. Revolt was trying to give you the money. I'm pretty sure, and I think I hear the Cash App deal is on his podcast now, but that was on his pull-up episodes before. Cash App was trying to give you the money. Now, you fucked up if you allow these niggas to basically be owed a percentage off of your podcast, and then all those deals end up being on the podcast. They might have a point. I'm being honest. That's where Joe might have fucked up. That's just what it is. But... I do believe Joe's probably thinks these deals came in because of me. Well, if that's your thought, you should never offer pro profit participation to the bozos, to the stooges. That's a fact. I'm not here. To, again, I'm, I'm, I'm impartial with it. That's why these bum ass thing has been driving Kias and all that shit, man. They, they, they trying to level up. I get it. Joe, you might have fucked up. And if you fucked up, you might have to pay up. But you should never gave if you because I really feel Joe feels all these deals came in because of me right now. Any deal I've ever talked about. I, I, I pitched the show, by the way, I pitched the show was me and somebody else. I won't tell who this. You know what the person told me? Act. Pitch it as if you're the only entity on the show. Because it's more difficult to deal with two people than it is to do, deal with one. And I realized that they were down to, they were basically telling me, we want you primarily. It doesn't matter if the other person's there. If you want to include them, you do it on your own time. But we only want to deal with you. Which, you know what that's going to tell me? They're offering this money primarily for me. I'm giving you exactly what's going on with Joe. Joe probably feel a little bit away about splitting in certain ways with these bum ass niggas because everybody is only dealing with him. And that's what I was saying about these two stooges. We're 19 minutes in. I'm going to play, keep playing what these bums are saying in a second. But let's just be very clear. 
what they're definitely not gonna uh, um touch on during this whole little speech that they're doing trying to explain shit away why in six years did y'all never do anything outside of the show to create additional value and additional leverage why because before joe talked i thought joe was preventing them from doing it and that would make sense if i prevented somebody from branching out of course i got to give them some type of value into what they're already they're locked into doing solely but these niggas have never done anything else but this why haven't they talked about that because you're not sitting up here with a with a little mean screw face talking about yeah four hundred thousand is a lot of money but if four hundred thousand is what you're owed over six years that you supposedly ain't get how much are you really getting now, I know 400000 is a lot of money, 100%. But that's about, you're pretty much saying for two of y'all, let's do the math, 400000 six years, right? Even if it was four years, it would be 100000 per year. If it's six years, it's probably about 80000 a year. It's two of y'all. Y'all arguing about $40,000 a year over six years. Huh? I'm just trying to put it in perspective, but listen to this. And on top of that, there should already be podcast accounting. Mm -hmm. You saying everyone has to run and do all this, and it's, you're taking away from the overall goal. But like, fam, I'm just asking what's in the contract. <laughs> your your lawyer, if you should know your all right, you should know your contract the same way you're saying that to me. If this was going to be an issue, you should have told your lawyer that you did not agree on accounting. Right. Yeah. Your law your lawyer agreed to accounting. Mm hmm. A body of an email and an Excel spreadsheet that people punch numbers into is not accounting. I don't care what you say. As a profit partner, that's not how it it's works. It's not accounting. I've talked with every lawyer and accountant I possibly fucking could have because I didn't want to be wrong on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't. Listen, I'm new to this the same way we all were new to this. Mm -hmm. We've all run business shit outside of this, but this is a new thing, especially to the degree of money that the three of us have gotten from it. Right. Ruri, I'm going to give you another business lesson. Again. In a, in a place where income is coming in from many different places, you're not entitled to see every single thing. I keep telling you, you are a worker. When Complex gave me my the accounting for everyday struggle, they're not telling me what other complex entities that I have no... That I, I heard about what money came in, but they don't have to tell me where that went. All they got to tell me is how much was allocated for my show. I've been telling y'all this. The reason why, even if Joe Budden's finessing y'all, y'all are going to feel it. And y'all probably going to catch, going to have to hold that L. Joe Budden makes a lot of money from a lot of different places. Y'all are only in concern or should only care about the podcast. Because of that, you really can't, you're not audit, like, I know y'all saying y'all audit in the podcast, but really y'all want to audit Joe. Joe also is seen as a podcast by some. Remember I just said, Cash App gave that nigga money for the pull up and then he was able to, because they really only want Joe, Joe was able to throw that Cash App sponsorship to the podcast. Do you understand what I mean? That's where it gets tricky. I hope you guys are staying on. These are dumbass niggas. I ain't gonna lie to you. They probably don't get it. The point is this. Joe is not only getting money from the podcast. Y'all are only getting money from the podcast. If Joe wants to finesse you, he could do it in mad different ways. You know why? Because Joe could just basically claim that that, that cash app deal, even though it's on the podcast, 80% of that is for Joe personally and 20% of the podcast. You know why he could do that? Because Joe owns the fucking, he's Joe. He's complex in that situation. I seen how much money that a company cut for on the, on the sticks. Epi, um, the first season, I said, oh my God, after we do our pro profit participation splits, I'm going to have a bag for just six episodes. By the time I got accounting, it wasn't half the money that I heard. It wasn't even, no, it was about 
One third the money. Was it one third? No. A quarter of the money. You know why? Being the owner, you get to allocate shit. I got the deal. I'm the owner. Only a quarter goes to that show. A quarter is going over here. A quarter is going over here. We did a bigger deal with that particular company. If you're not a boss, who are you to say that the deal with, with Cash App, that Joe Budden Spotify deal, was solely only for the podcast? Y'all have never seen those contracts. It's easy for Joe to finesse y'all, you dumbass niggas. And that's exactly why I, kept, I keep saying when y'all keep talking, y'all not workers, you are workers. Because even if you audit him, he could just put some shit in a fucking column that it's none of your business. He only has to show you what is allocated for the podcast. Who makes the determination what money goes to the podcast versus what is for the network versus what is for Joe Budden primarily? Joe does. Patreon. If Patreon gave Joe a million dollars, they gave him a title and also the podcast is over there. You know what he could say? 950000 is for me as, as a salary. 50000 goes to the podcast. Now, you could sit there all blue in the face. Oh, you, well, 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 you, you, well, well, they wouldn't have gave you that if the podcast was in there. That's cool, but you don't own it. You don't fucking own it, dummies. I'm telling you. Even if he's finessing y'all, robbing y'all blind. This is the same thing I was telling y'all when y'all ain't at the table that's really breaking bread, negotiating deals, and making decisions. That's why you're a worker. After my experience with Complex, I learned so many different things. I start, I, I, I don't want to front some of my own moves, just trying to make a point. But I, I said, I need these relationships and I need to be Complex. Joe dealt with Complex and he got fucked. You think Joe didn't think the same thing? We giving you business. And I'm glad, at least so far, y'all ain't confusing friendship and business, but that's what y'all did when y'all went back. Oh, don't know, we friends, you're not supposed... No, it's business, niggas. But let's, let listen, let's listen to these niggas. This is a new thing. Right. So I went back and double-checked, because I don't even want to accuse my man that... All right, maybe I'm wrong, because everything I've done has been through ledgers, quick It was books, never no everything. accusations. Ever. It, it was not never, once. It was never... He was the one that, that brought that to the table, like, you know, y'all are trying to paint me a certain way, and I'm like... What are you talking about? Like, we're just saying that we've we received accounting yeah. and then there was a four hundred and something thousand dollar quote unquote mistake. And after that, we never got accounting again. So I'm just like, all right, so what the fuck is going on? Like, is the mistake fixed? Can we get the updated version of accounting? Like nothing. So wealth management hits me, says, hey, yeah, we made a mistake. We're correcting the mistake. Here you go. I said, OK, bet. I talk with Joe, I talk with Ian, honestly can't remember about a better strategy to go about doing this. From Rip, I've always been the one on trying to do a better strategy with going about these things because I've noticed, and I'm and at this point, not mad at it, I've just noticed anytime I ask a very simple question, I met with so much anger and tension off like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So my accountant gets on with wealth management, my lawyer gets on with wealth management. They even talk about, yo, just come down. We'll open shit up. You guys could look at it. I wasn't even going to go. Why would I go? I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My accountant can go. Mm -hmm. Just to get the, the record. I hate these niggas. I fucking hate them. I'm, let me tell you why I hate these niggas. Chat, if it's not apparent by how I act and how I move, I live, breathe, shit, sleep. I dream about hip-hop, what I do. This is my life. There's no, I don't even like... Ha my fun is this. This is more fun. This is more fun than anything I do in life. Maybe other than fucking. That's it. But that should be clear and apparent to anybody who watch me. I hate niggas like this because they always are trying to act too cool. Nah, I don't care. Bro, you literally haven't showed up to your job for like eight weeks because you do care. Bro, this is all y'all do. This is exactly why like I'll be saying y'all are frauds. Y'all are mad at the nigga because you think he robbing you. You do care. You asked for an audit. 
You had to hire a lawyer. You had to hire maybe your own accountant people to go over their numbers. What you mean you don't care? You trying to act cool? Well, all right, cool. All right, get robbed and be cool. Get robbed and be cool. I care about everything. You hear this bum ass thing? Why would I go check out? They said I could come look at the numbers. Why would I go check it out? I don't care. Nigga, you are doing this whole thing because of the numbers. Joe said it. The magic word in the room, the A word is called accounting. Are you dumb? This is exactly why when Joe counters their points by saying, y'all don't care about the business that I care about a lot, I have to agree with Joe. How could y'all complain about money and accounting and then the same breath also say you don't care? Question, I met with so much anger and tension off like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So my accountant gets on with wealth management. My lawyer gets on with wealth management. They even talk about, yo, just come down. We'll open shit up. You guys can look at it. I wasn't even going to go. Why would I go? I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my accountant can go mm -hmm. just to get the, the regular shit because maybe they have a lot going on and maybe my accountant can just look at it and be like, all right, bet. That's the end of 2019. Pandemic hits. Who gives a fuck? No, we had a, we had a talk. No, because we can't skip over this. We had a talk before the pandemic hit about accounting again. And this was right after Cole passed away and we were outside the studio. And he was the first because now I'm seeing this narrative that we're auditing him. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was the first one that even brought auditing to the table. When we asked him for accounting. He said, yeah, I got accounting. We said, yeah, but that was wrong. It was a mistake on that. Like, where's the new one? And he was like, oh, y'all trying to paint me away. Da, da, da. And I'm like, no, we just want the correct accounting. Oh, well, then audit me then. I and I'm like, audit you? I don't like, audit. Fam, that's nasty. I'm not taking my niggas to court. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, that's just... Chat, I hate these bum-ass niggas, man. Because I hate... Yo. Chat, do you understand that these niggas... I, I'm going to restate the position that I've heard. They feel Joe owes them millions of dollars. I've heard that Mealy Mole is like... Fuck it. I guess we might not end up be friends, whatever, whatever. But the nigga owes me bread, and I want my money. Bro, Joe ain't going to just hand down money. You probably are going to have to sue him. I hate that these niggas are still trying to drive home this narrative like they're too real for what's actually going on. This is a business dispute at this point, and lawyers are and will be involved. I remember a couple weeks ago, niggas was like, oh, Agua's lying. They're about to sue. Yes, nigga. Lawyers are going to be involved. Joe is not giving these bum ass things millions of dollars out the blue for nothing. If they want it, they're going to have to sue. But you keep hearing these things. I don't want to. Bro, like, that's where y'all at with it, you dumb ass nigga. This is not, but, but again, looking back, everything makes sense now. Like, everything is starting to come together and, 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 and paint a picture. Because it's like, yo, why do you always get so hostile and so argumentative when we're trying to just get the business side right and focused and taken care of which isn't even a, a large part of the business honestly it's not There's so much more but to it's it. like <laughs> fam you got to remember again thing. we're profit partners we're a percentage based we have a percentage based contract an agreement where we get a percentage off of everything that's coming in for the pot so we have to see the money that's coming in how else will we know what the fuck we getting and then he had the nerve to say the last one of the last conversations we had, he tells me, "Oh, you got a calculator, right?" Uh, yeah. And this is this is this for me. This That's is when my story. But this ahead. is when for me, I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna have to pull away from this in a minute because I don't even know who this nigga is anymore, and I don't know who this nigga think he's talking to." And I'm fam. I'm not trying to. That energy to me is corny to even have that type. Tat business and friendship don't work. I haven't spoke to Joe in weeks, so don't think that this is what Joe told No. If you ask me, Joe still feels a way, because he brought it up randomly, that this nigga who was homeless, hiding detergent and Tide Pods under his pillow, and literally without a future, his brother didn't give a fuck about him, is now pressing him for money when Joe was nice enough to give him an opportunity. Again, Joe ain't the best CEO because Joe is also kind of like them in mixing feelings and business. 
So he's like, damn, a nigga who was living with me, like loafing off of me, selfish as fuck, hiding Tide Pods under his pillows. This motherfucker is, is pressing me about money? Maybe I can understand. Not saying Joe is right. Because business is business. But that's why when you go into business with your friends, you have to establish clear boundaries. Type of energy with, with niggas you call your friends. Like, I don't even want to have that type of energy on me. Right? So when he started talking like that, and I told you this, I said, fam, I'm not even sure who this nigga is anymore. Because he's saying things, he's moving a certain way, he's wearing funny hats. <laughs> I don't know who this nigga is. That's a great comment right there. He's, I don't know who this nigga is. He's saying things. He's moving weird. He's wearing funny hats. Let me just put that um, in person. Fendi hats like it's going out of style. Okay, just like I wear fitted. Okay. Now, I'm. you see that, con that comment right there cannot be just taken in jest. I'm going to tell you why. These two niggas, and this is my belief. Joe ain't tell me shit. It's my belief that these two niggas and some of the problems that really got brought to the forefront they have been watching Joe's pockets. They've been watching Joe, who, by the way, even though he always has some shit, you know, he never was living as luxurious as he's been living recently. He's never been wearing as much designer shit as he's living recently. And I thought about it, and I gave you all an example before. If I had an employee that said, yo, yo, did I really buy two supercars in the last six months? Yo, acted... I'm firing you off the rip. That's none of your fucking business. I get my money from 10 different sources. You worry about what the fuck you got going on. These niggas have been watching Joe's pockets. So when they're seen, oh, wait, Joe just paid some money for some new teeth. Joe just did this. Joe brought his girl here. Joe spending this on this. Joe on Clubhouse, like, paying for chicks BBLs. Yo, Joe doing this. They're counting his money. They're counting his money, but here's the thing I think they're wrong on. They think that the money that he's spending came from their hard work. That's where I would disagree. Maybe he did, but I would disagree. In the last two years, I've seen Joe in like two seasons of Love and Hip Hop. I've seen Joe. Yo, Joe been all over the place like he's a goddamn Mexican, and I love my Mexican people, but we all know when it comes to Mexicans and Jamaicans, we know how to secure a bag. We'll have 30 jobs just to get that check. I see Joe all over the place. Pull up, revolt, um, podcast, multiple podcasts, Spotify. I see that nigga everywhere. That nigga was about collecting the fucking bag. These bum ass niggas, because they're entitled, think that Joe is spending the money that they are earning Joe. is anymore don't do that i'm just being real <laughs> i never seen a nigga wear a mary hat in my life <laughs> i wasn't mad at some last man i'm just saying i've never seen a nigga wearing a mary hat in my life by the way i see some people commenting it and again i told you i'm being fair neutral and impartial even though these fucking bums really only deserve about fifteen thousand dollars a year um but fine you know i'm gonna entertain y'all today some people say, yo, well, $400,000 being missing from the account, and that's really serious. That is serious, okay? But truth be told, I'm going to just say this. I can't comment on that when... I, I was talking to somebody today. I won't, won't say the name. And they said, yo, these guys have some compelling points against Joe. You know what I told them? Joe is like me, I think. I will embarrass myself to embarrass you. You'll never out-truth me. Always remember that. You will never out-truth me. I will expose me to expose you. I will do it every single day. And when y'all come on here and y'all start saying 400,000, let me tell y'all how you should have done it if a nigga like me is going to believe you. Let's start it from day one. You see me? Remember the day I, I told Freddie Gibbs, I said, Freddie Gibbs, I don't give a fuck if you a rapper, nigga. I'm doing my thing, and I'm getting more money than you. If that nigga had said, yo, act, you pussy, throw your tax returns up, I would have threw my tax returns on Twitter. You cannot out. You can't chick. I don't do chicken when it comes to, I always put the truth out. Even if it makes me look crazy, fuck it. 
these niggas, they're talking about certain things that's missing. But then we hear Joe side. Joe say y'all are overpaid. Who knows when y'all are overpaid? Were y'all overpaid in times when the podcast didn't have no deal? Was Joe going out of his pocket to overpay y'all? How much money were y'all getting? So we had to save 400000 Y'all got to give the whole context. What was your salary, my nigga? What was the percentage? If I'm going to talk about Joe and this, and I'm in their position, I told that nigga, I said, I guarantee these pussy niggas, they won't ever come out and be real. Because these niggas act like they're too cool for school. If it was me versus Joe, nigga, I'm going to tell you from day one, yo, from, from July 31st, whatever year, to that year, I made no money. Then I started getting... 18000 a year. Then I start getting this. Then he got Spotify. Then I got paid this. Then I was offered and I owned, or not owned, I was offered and I was entitled to this percentage of the profits. Bro, they're talking about shit that we don't even know where it came from. If you going to be transparent, give it all. If you're going to be transparent, give it all. Because I'm going to be honest with y'all. If I was paying these things out of my pocket before a deal and then I get a deal or I get some money from whatever, I'm subtracting it. We got to recoup. That's how the records label do it. We got to recoup. All I'm saying is that I'm not even going to say they're lying, but I'm not going to discuss them saying $400,000 until they're transparent as fuck. Don't talk about $400,000 missing. How much were you getting paid, nigga? How much were you entitled to, nigga? How much was the revenue coming in, nigga? If you're not going to talk about that, don't just mention numbers. Because if I was about it, if it was me and Joe, if, if y'all realize also, I love Joe. I remember when it came to Everyday Show, and I was like, yo, Joe, chill out with this this an Everyday Show while I'm on this shit, because I'm it feel like you, you kicking it in the back of a show Joe, chill. You know why? Because, nigga, I'm down to go there with anybody. I put every fucking conversation, every detail on the screen. Y'all will never, ever call me a liar. Don't just throw things out. It's going to be he said, she said. This is exactly what love and hip-hop is. Joe about to talk next. Y'all going to believe Joe again. Then these dick-sucking-ass things going to talk again. You might believe them again. You know what you could do to end all this shit? If I was in that position, my contract is up on the screen. Fuck that. I'm showing you messages. Y'all remember when all these rappers used to be lying on me? Blah, blah, blah. How many times I put Nikki messages on the screen? Don't lie on me. Because my integrity is all I got. And I don't expose messages with rappers. But if you lie on me and you start impugning on my integrity, I'm going to expose everything. So when I hear them saying selective shit, okay, cool. I hear the 400,000. That sounds fucked up. But, bro, y'all not telling us nothing else. How much were y'all being paid, nigga? Talk about it. Did at any point Joe take a loss by paying y'all while not having a deal? Y'all ain't talking about that. Y'all not keeping it 100. And that's why I said, I promise y'all they will never win a narrative war against Joe because Joe's like me. Joe gonna go on the next episode. I, I promise you. Joe's gonna go on there and he's gonna tell y'all so much information that these bums never told y'all you're going to be like, fuck. Y'all complain after this? I promise you. Who on the bet? Somebody said, act mad that you got bread? They got through 400000 in the stock market like three days ago. What the fuck you think? 400000 is bread? I know y'all niggas ain't told me. And by the way, the 400000 they told me I was missing it. Did not belong to them. And they told my six years. <laughs> Stop it. Don't y'all ever talk. Nigga, I, I violate these niggas in every single type of way. Nigga, I'm trying to find where Ruri Mama live. I'm about to buy that shit. I'm about to try to make Shorty homeless. You know me. I'm devious. Nigga, I buy it and just de demolish it. Fuck it. Y'all know how I get down. <laughs> nigga say I'm mad at it. If you're not told my Charlemagne the God, there's not one of these media niggas getting more than me. That's what I'm going to tell y'all. I've been telling y'all that shit. So I don't know what y'all think that there ain't no jealousy that could be on my, my plate. You know what I mean? I keep telling you, I live like a, I live like a rapper. Sorry. <laughs> well, actually, Vlad lived like that, too. But Vlad don't be talking shit. I was talking to Vlad yesterday. I told him, like, yo, talk some shit, man. 
He'd be cooler. I don't know. No jumper might live like that, too. That nigga doing pornos. All type of shit. Who knows? All right. Anyway, let's keep listening to these bozos. Life. So that, for me, was telling. I was like, oh, mm. this nigga, he's transforming into somebody else. Yeah. So I'm just like, why is it an issue? But for me, it was like, you know, you, you, you're just talking to certain people and everybody telling you, like, yo, listen, I did business with him. Watch that nigga, man. I'm like, I'm like Joe ain't going to do that to me. That's my yeah. nigga. He ain't doing that with me. It honestly, never, never even crossed my never mind. Never crossed period. my mind. But now, when this becoming argumentative and niggas are saying this and saying that, every time accounting comes up, I'm like, I'm like, fam, why is it only an issue when accounting comes up? The same way he said, why is it only a problem when money get brought in? And again, my thing is, it's not about the money. It just, no, it just became not. a point where the respect level just started to disappear, and you start talking to me like. Yo, I hate these things. Bro, it is about the money. Oh, no, it's cool with being robbed, but then it's when he started disrespecting me. Stop it, dog. You're not here doing this thing talking about him respecting you. You're talking about money. It is about money. It's fine, bro. It's about money. I work for you. And it's like, my nigga, I don't work for you. I don't work for you, bro. I don't know what, you, what type of meetings you having and who's talking to you and who's breaking down what to you. I don't work for you, bro. Like, this is something we built and pushed again. I came on episode 77. Mealy Mo, you work for the Joe Budden podcast. I don't know why. I think y'all have sat so close to Joe, y'all are delusional. Don't let Joe talk in equity make y'all be delusional. I keep telling y'all, there's nothing wrong with being a worker. I, along with Joe, we're workers at Complex. Bro, you don't own the Joe Budden podcast. You have a contract. Even if it's participation-based, you are a worker, my nigga. Bro, y'all talking all that shit? I don't think Joe Budden got a million subscribers on YouTube yet. When me and Joe got to Complex, we got them to the first million, and they got them to the second in six months. Y'all been there six fucking years. I couldn't sit there and talking about, oh, I helped build complex. I, I'm not no worker. I was a fucking worker, nigga. Why is y'all so, y'all are resentful of that title because y'all don't own nothing. I could admit when I'm a worker because I got my shit that I own. I'm not a worker at the DJ Academics company. No, I own it. But at complex, I'm a worker. It's fine. It's a duality, it's a life. You don't have to be, we're not on some Dame Dash shit saying you only gotta be a boss. Just accept what it is and also work to create some other shit that is yours. Y'all never had the ambition to try to create your own. So that's why y'all in denial about where y'all do work and y'all trying to say it's not what it is. Y'all are workers, it's fine. I keep, I'm giving y'all real life examples. You think I could go in the complex and say, I help y'all, I build y'all to here. I own this. You think they invite me to board meetings? You think they invite me to all that shit? No. I'm a worker. Was part of them hiring me to help build? Was part of Joe hiring you to help build? Yes. Because you built doesn't mean you own. No. How much times do I have to tell you this, Mealy Mall? You're 40. Your brother was Biggs. Your brother was part owner, allegedly, in Rockefeller. How are you this fucking dumb? I keep calling you Jay-Z's pre-cum because it's clear you just didn't get it all. It's like you a preemie, nigga. Fuck is up with you. But let's keep watching. But who gives a fuck? Before that, it wasn't. It, it wasn't no money here. Let's or, just be honest. Or, it wasn't. Or, it, or it, it wasn't. It wasn't what it is now. And you, you never argued IP. I want to make that clear. Never. Rory never argued IP. Maul never I, argued IP. I never IP. argued that. It was never about that. I'm like, fam. I'm, I, I want this to <laughs> be. I want this to be as simple and easy as possible. This should be the simplest bag, the simplest money we ever make. Because essentially, what are we doing? We sitting down as friends and we kicking it. Yeah. We don't have to complicate this thing. But then after a while, once bigger checks start to come in, and once we're touring and all of this, 
it's like you start to see niggas moving certain ways and it's like it's like all right fam it's now it's just weird like what the fuck is going on here and for a while my energy started to disappear because like i said i don't even know who i'm dealing with anymore at this point mm -hmm. and i know money changes niggas and i understand that no, no it doesn't money doesn't change anyway Money, makes, money makes, magnifies makes, who makes, you are. Make, makes you more what you already it, are. It magnifies who you are. And I get it, bro. Like, I, I understand. And I, again, this is not an assassination character. I, sorry to cut you off. It's not an assassination character because I don't want to go on the same no, route I, that I, they went. I'm, Yo, I hate when people say money doesn't change people. And they're usually saying it from the perspective of they're not the person allegedly with the bulk of the money. Money changes everybody. When money is added to a situation, people... Whether you have the money or you don't have the money, people start acting differently to you. I can't tell you enough of people who now talk to me in my life talking about, act, yo, you changed up. Why are you not, why are you not doing this like when you didn't have whatever, whatever? And a lot of times my answer to them is, bro, do you know what things I do a day? You want me to act like I have the, the ultimate free time and, and like I was just bored and you want me to hit you up all the time? Bro, I'm busy a lot of times. I got to do these things. I have obligations. Money changes everybody. It doesn't only change a person with the money. It changes the person who have been around that person when they didn't have the money. So I, I always say that. Also entitlement. Now people feel like, yo, I'm going to be honest with you. This is an ongoing conversation in my personal life. People have been saying to me, well, you... You're having these friends or business associates that's enjoying this that comes along with the money you have. But what about me? I knew you from blah, blah, blah. I knew you from blah, blah, blah. It's hard to explain to those people that that what I'm doing and the people who's around have something to do with my business now. And maybe you don't. So money changes everybody. I'm trying to tell you that it's not only the change on the person with the money, it's the change on the people who have been around you before the money. Just let you know. I'm not assassinating. Joe has done great things with money and great positive things because I do think there is a good part of him, but there's also this other part. Right. Absolutely. Which you're speaking to. Yeah. I'm, I, I think Joe has some amazing qualities. I think so too when he wants to, but I, but I also, I'm learning, I'm learning because, see, you got to give shit time to, to fall the way it's going to fall. Yeah, got to give time right? time. And yeah, and you got to just watch people. And, you know, I heard Joe say, oh, yeah, me and Maul, never, we never broke down a bag or bust down bread together, whatever he said. And I'm like, my nigga, that's not true. Like, mm. but when you were still rapping and shit, I had you do verses for niggas that I know. I had you do videos with niggas that I know. Like, I, I had you through walkthroughs with promoters that I know, like in different, like in Connecticut and shit like that. Like, I had... I tried to like bring shit to the table, like, but again, I was never, it's never about money for me. It's all about you, you my man. Listen, if it's some bread out here to get, go get it. If I know some niggas that's trying to do a party and they're a whole, they want you to do a walkthrough and all that, yo, here, let me set it up for you. But now, you know, that, that is bigger money coming in and all that, shit just got weird, bro. Like, shit just got very weird for me. And I'm not good with doing weird shit. I don't do weird shit. I don't like weird energy from niggas. Again, I gotta push it in context. Y'all hearing these niggas' perspective. I ain't giving Joe's perspective, but I know when niggas start talking like this, they're neglecting something. This is the same nigga. He's talking about how money has changed, possibly Joe. But this is the same nigga who is on a podcast talking about money and business. And he's the same nigga that three weeks ago was talking about, I don't give a fuck about podcasting, or I don't give a fuck about business, or I don't give a fuck about a contract. Could you imagine how Joe feels? What the fuck? Nigga, you just said these things don't concern you and you don't care about it. But now you're pressing me legally. Your lawyers are hitting me up querying certain shit that has to do with all the shit you publicly stated you don't care about. You don't care about podcasting. Yet you are caring about what the podcast is going to do, what the decisions are going to be, where they're going to go, ownership. You should say you didn't care about it. You don't care about money and shit like that. But you're clearly arguing over it. These niggas, they're not being transparent. There was a time when I told y'all these niggas, they were mad over money. These niggas try to come back and say it was over respect. Oh, we're just mad because you don't respect us. Is it clear that there that it was over money at this point? 
Like I remove my once I see niggas doing weird, funny shit. I just get away from that. Like, I don't even want to be around that type of shit. And now it's to a point where you saying things and, you know, you got other niggas in the room saying things and chiming in. And I'm like, yo, what's up with y'all niggas? Like, what the fuck is going on? So now I'm sitting here working. Now everything is it's starting to become real, really clear to me. Like shit is starting to really become clear to me. Like, oh, you niggas been having little conversations and, 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 and conspiring shit for a minute. You niggas been trying to like set shit, you know, playing shit with the chess piece and try to sh set shit up to look a certain way for a while now. Because now that the shit is out the bag, I'm starting to see everybody's true feelings on, 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 on certain things. And people right. is talking about business that they don't know nothing about. They they talking about contracts that they don't know nothing about. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. fam, what the fuck is going on here, man? And then you saying shit, I, you, oh, I lived with you. You making it sound like, oh, nigga, I wasn't. When you met me, I had money in my pocket, nigga. I might have had more money in my pocket. Nigga, you have money in your pocket to buy some more Tide Pods, some more detergent. I don't even think you were, you, you, I don't think you were like a fabric softener type of guy. Nah, I don't think you were that type of guy. You definitely never use bleach. No way. You had money for Tide Pods. That's about it. I could then you had if we keeping it a hundred. I was always hustling. Always. Always doing. Wait, hold on. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Yo, Joe, these niggas say you were broke as fuck too, nigga. I wish a nigga coming to my vicinity would say that. Talking about contracts that they don't know nothing about. And I'm just like... Mm -hmm. Fam, what it sound like? Oh, nigga, I wasn't. When you met me, I had money in my pocket, nigga. I might have had more money in my pocket than you had if we keeping it a hundred. Yo, Joe, you was broke. Yo, Joe, no fucking way. When Joe meet this nigga? Yo, Joe, you was broke as fuck. Oh hell nah. Yo, I keep telling yo. Shout out to my man DJ Ghost. He said this recently. YouTubers got more money than rappers. Joe, that nigga says you were broke as fuck when he met you. And we know he ain't had nothing but lint and three pennies in his pocket. He said he had more than you. What y'all had going on, brother? That's tough. Nah, this is bad. No, this is bad. Yo, Joe, you was out here struggling? Joe, all you got to do, nigga, just hit up Big Act, man. We going to get a show with one of these motherfuckers, get some millions. It's all good. Mealy Mo said he had more bread than you, bro. Holy. I was always hustling. Always. Always doing shit I sh nigga, nigga was always scamming. This nigga's a scammer. Mealy Mo is a scammer. He, hustling is a scamming. That's what he means. Shouldn't have been doing. That I didn't really want to do at, at a time allegedly. in my life. Allegedly. Allegedly. But I'm just saying, like, I was always a nigga that if I had to go get it, I would go get it. Mm -hmm. So don't try to paint me like I'm some nigga that you found on the street and I was fucked up. I was homeless and I was sleeping on your couch. I'm hiding detergent and all this shit. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Let's talk about what you hiding. Because every time it's a talk about accounting, it's always some argumentative energy coming from you only, not from me, not from you. Never. I'm never arguing <laughs> about money, especially not with my niggas. I'm not doing that. But if every time we present some shit about accounting and you want to start arguing to them, well, audit me then. Fam, I'm never taking my niggas to court. And the first thing you say is, if y'all try to start a podcast, I'm suing the pants off of y'all. Yo, chat. I just want to, I ain't taking credit. Let me tell you this. The moment I start showing to the whole, listen, fuck these rappers. These rappers broke anyway. The moment I start showing to all these media niggas and everybody else that act, I live more than great. Everybody been checking their numbers twice, calling their accountants, doing everything. They're wondering why, like, yeah, 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 I get it. Trust me. Ever since I started doing it, that's why from here on out, every car I get, I'm about to order something like in two weeks for my next birthday because it's going to take a year to come up. Ever since then, these niggas been like in disarray. I remember Peter Rosenberg, he wrote me a whole thing. He said, yeah, I know I've been in the industry for 20 years. I'm not jealous of you. And I'm like, fuck, you wrote a whole paragraph. Like, what the fuck is up with you? Listen to these niggas. 
mistake. Yeah. We were wrong. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, cool. Then I watch Joe say in a very condescending, sarcastic tone, Roy came to me and said, it's not that I don't trust you. It's that I don't trust wealth management. Oh, he said the name, so I can say it. Mm -hmm. Fam, yeah. I don't care how condescending you say that. And it, and it contradicts the fuck what you were saying. I never thought you were stealing. Right. I'm trying to understand what the fuck they're doing over here because mm -hmm. this is incorrect. Right. And I, and I sit behind this expense. Mad more simple. importantly, more importantly, Mad I'm simple. paying for this. Right. Again, these bum ass things talk too much. Let me let me tell you also what I've heard because uh, I was at the you know what I mean I was at the gun range you know I me mean? doing my little thing earlier. <laughs> Got to stay prepared. Um, but I heard that this was coming, and in having conversations and and whatever. They're taking a long time to get to the point. These bozos are claiming. I don't know if they'll say it on this video, but they're claiming. This is what they are saying to people, to lawyers, to managers, to friends, to industry aficionados that they believe Joe. They're being really kind of like dicey on if they're trying to call him a thief, but they're saying that Joe owes them money. And they feel it's in the millions. Okay? That's what I heard. Okay? I also heard that it probably will go to a lawyer or possibly lawsuits because with that particular amount of money, Even more than Ruri, niggas like Mealy Maul. Actually, I heard he was pressing. Niggas want to get paid. Now, just putting everything together, because they're talking too slow. These things are... Who the fuck listens to them? They're saying they have a profit participation with the Joe Budden podcast. Not owners, you're still workers, but you're having a profit participation. It's talent. Cool. cool. Now, if you're feeling you're owed millions of dollars, you mean... And I don't know what what, what profit or, or what's the percentage on the participation. You probably think that Joe has gotten millions of dollars that you have not shared in, right? Um, I guess that's up for debate. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if Joe wasn't his business. You know what I mean? I always said that, like, if Joe did sign a contract with them to say they have profit participation in the podcast, I'm gonna be honest with you, Joe. I love you, but you fucked up. If you were going to run the business like that, it's your IP, you own whatever, whatever, you should have never offered them that. Because here's the thing, Joe. Most of these deals coming in, and you notice, well, they're coming in for you. They're not coming in because of these two niggas. Again, the Spotify deal, Spotify never felt a need to talk to them. They felt a need to talk to you. Just like Revolt. They didn't feel a need to talk to me. They felt a need to talk to you. Who are they trying to give these deals to? Those people they're talking to. So Spotify was trying to give you the money. Revolt was trying to give you the money. I'm pretty sure, and I think I hear the Cash App deal is on his podcast now, but that was on his pull-up episodes before. Cash App was trying to give you the money. Now, you fucked up if you allow these niggas to basically be owed a percentage off of your podcast and then all those deals end up being on the podcast. They might have a point. I'm being honest. That's where Joe might have fucked up. That's just what it is. But I do believe Joe's probably thinks these deals came in because of me. Well, if that's your thought, you should never offer pro profit participation to the bozos, to the stooges. That's a fact. I'm not here. To, again, I'm, I'm, I'm impartial with it. That's why these bum ass thingies been driving Kias and all that shit, man. They 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 trying to level up. I get it. Joe, you might have fucked up, and if you fucked up, you might have to pay up. But you should never gave if you, because I really feel Joe feels all these deals came in because of me. Right now, any deal I've ever talked about, I I, yo, I pitched the show by the way. I pitched the show it was me and somebody else. I won't tell who this. You know what the person told me. Act. Pitch it as if you're the only entity on the show. Because it's more difficult to deal with two people than it is to do deal with one. 
and I realized that they were down to, they were basically telling me, we want you primarily. It doesn't matter if the other person's there. If you want to include them, you do it on your own time. But we only want to deal with you. Which, you know what that's going to tell me? They're offering this money primarily for me. I'm giving you exactly what's going on with Joe. Joe probably feel a little bit away about splitting in certain ways with these bum ass niggas because everybody is only dealing with him. And that's what I was saying about these two stooges. We're 19 minutes in. I'm going to play, keep playing what these bums are saying in a second. But let's just be very clear. What they're definitely not going to uh, um, touch on during this whole little speech that they're doing, trying to explain shit away. Why in six years did y'all never do anything outside of the show to create additional value and additional leverage? Why? Because before Joe talked, I thought Joe was preventing them from doing it. And that would make sense. If I prevented somebody from branching out, of course I got to give them some type of value into what they're already, they're locked into doing solely. But these niggas have never done anything else but this. Why haven't they talked about that? Because you're not sitting up here with a, with a little mean screw face talking about, yeah, 400000 is a lot of money, but if 400000 is what you're owed over six years that you supposedly ain't get, how much are you really getting? Now, I know 400000 is a lot of money, 100%. But that's about, you're pretty much saying for two of y'all, let's do the math, 400000 six years, right? Even if it was four years, it would be 100000 per year. If it's six years, it's probably about 80000 a year. It's two of y'all. Y'all arguing about $40,000 a year over six years. Huh? I'm just trying to put it in perspective, but listen to this. And on top of that, there should already be podcast accounting. Mm -hmm. You saying everyone has to run and do all this and it's, you're taking away from the overall goal. But like, fam, I'm just asking what's in the contract. <laughs> your, your lawyer, if you should know your, all right, you should know your contract the same way you're saying that to me. If this was going to be an issue, you should have told your lawyer that you did not agree on accounting. Right. Yeah. Your, law, your lawyer agreed to accounting. Mm-hmm. A body of an email and an Excel spreadsheet that people punch numbers into is not accounting. I don't care what you say. As a profit partner, that's not how it it's works. It's not accounting. I've talked with every lawyer and accountant I possibly fucking could have because I didn't want to be wrong on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't. Listen, I'm new to this the same way we all were new to this. Mm -hmm. We've all run business shit outside of this, but this is a new thing, especially to the degree of money that the three of us have gotten from it. Right. Is Ruri, I'm going to give you another business lesson. Again. In a, in a place where income is coming in from many different places, you're not entitled to see every single thing. I keep telling you, you are a worker. When Complex gave me my the accounting for everyday struggle, they're not telling me what other complex entities that I have no... That I, I heard about what money came in, but they don't have to tell me where that went. All they got to tell me is how much was allocated for my show. I've been telling y'all this. The reason why, even if Joe Budden's finessing y'all, y'all are going to feel it. And y'all probably going to catch, going to have to hold that L. Joe Budden makes a lot of money from a lot of different places. Y'all are only in concern or should only care about the podcast. Because of that, you really can't, you're not, audit, like, I know y'all saying y'all audit in the podcast, but really y'all want to audit Joe. Joe also is seen as a podcast by some. Remember I just said, Cash App gave that nigga money for the pull up, and then he was able to, because they really only want Joe, Joe was able to throw that Cash App sponsorship to the podcast. Do you understand what I mean? That's where it gets tricky. I hope you guys are staying on. These are dumbass niggas. I ain't gonna lie to you. They probably don't get it. The point is this. Joe is not only getting money from the podcast. Y'all are only getting money from the podcast. If Joe wants to finesse you, he could do it in mad different ways. You know why? 
because Joe could just basically claim that that, that Cash App deal, even though it's on the podcast, 80% of that is for Joe personally and 20% of the podcast. You know why he could do that? Because Joe owns the fucking... He's Joe! He's complex in that situation. I seen how much money that a company cut for on the, on the sticks epi, um, the first season. I said, oh my God. After we do our pro profit participation splits, I'm going to have a bag for just six episodes. By the time I got accounting, it wasn't half the money that I heard. It wasn't even, no, it was about one third the money. Was it one third? No. A quarter of the money. You know why? Being the owner, you get to allocate shit. I got the deal. I'm the owner. Only a quarter goes to that show. A quarter is going over here. A quarter is going over here. We did a bigger deal with that particular company. If you're not a boss, who are you to say that the deal with, with Cash App, that Joe Budden Spotify deal, was solely only for the podcast? Y'all have never seen those contracts. It's easy for Joe to finesse y'all, you dumbass niggas. And that's exactly why I, kept, I keep saying when y'all keep talking, y'all not workers, you are workers. Because even if you audit him, he could just put some shit in a fucking column that it's none of your business. He only has to show you what is allocated for the podcast. Who makes the determination what money goes to the podcast versus what is for the network versus what is for Joe Budden primarily? Joe does. Patreon. If Patreon gave Joe a million dollars, they gave him a title, and also the podcast is over there. You know what he can say? Nine hundred and fifty thousand is for me as as a salary. Fifty thousand goes to the podcast. Now you can sit there all blue in the face, so you want. Whoa, whoa, you, you, whoa, whoa! They wouldn't have gave you that if the podcast wasn't there. That's cool, but you don't own it. You don't fucking own it, dummies. I'm telling you, even if he's finessing y'all, robbing y'all blind. This is the same thing I was telling y'all when y'all ain't at the table that's really breaking bread, negotiating deals, and making decisions. That's why you're a worker. After my experience with Complex, I learned so many different things. I start, I, I, I don't want to front some of my own moves, just trying to make a point. But I, I said, I need these relationships and I need to be complex. Joe dealt with complex and he got fucked. You think Joe didn't think the same thing? We giving you business. And I'm glad, at least so far, y'all ain't confusing friendship and business, but that's what y'all did when y'all went back. Oh, no, no, we friends, you're not supposed... No, it's business, niggas. But let's, let's, listen, let's listen to these niggas. This is a new thing. Right. So I went back and double checked because I don't even want to accuse my man that right, maybe I'm wrong because everything I've done has been through ledgers. Quick it was books, never no everything. accusations. Ever. It, it was Not never. Once. It was never. He was the one that that brought that to the table. Like, you know, y'all are trying to paint me a certain way. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, we're just saying that we've we received accounting mm -hmm. and then there was a four hundred and something thousand dollar quote unquote mistake. And after that, we never got accounting again. So I'm just like, all right, so what the fuck is going on? Like, is the mistake fixed? Can we get the updated version of accounting? Like, nothing. So wealth management hits me, says, hey, yeah, we made a mistake. We're correcting the mistake. Here you go. I said, okay, bet. I talk with Joe. I talk with Ian. Honestly, can't remember about a better strategy to go about doing this. From Rip, I've always been the one on trying to do a better strategy with going about these things because I've noticed, and I'm and at this point, not mad at it, I've just noticed anytime I ask a very simple question, I met with so much anger and tension off like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So my accountant gets on with wealth management. My lawyer gets on with wealth management. They even talk about, yo, just come down. We'll open shit up. You guys can look at it. I wasn't even going to go. Why would I go? I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my accountant can go. Mm -hmm. Just to get the the right... I hate these niggas. I fucking hate them. I'm, let me tell you why I hate these niggas. Chat, if it's not apparent by how I act and how I move, I live, breathe, shit, sleep, 
I dream about hip hop, what I do. This is my life. There's no, I don't even like, ha my fun is this. This is more fun. This is more fun than anything I do in life. Maybe other than fucking. That's it. But that should be clear and apparent to anybody who watch me. I hate niggas like this because they always are trying to act too cool. Nah, I don't care. Bro, you literally haven't showed up to your job for like eight weeks because you do care. Bro, this is all y'all do. This is exactly why, like, I'll be saying y'all are frauds. Y'all are mad at the nigga because you think he robbing you. You do care. You asked for an audit. You had to hire a lawyer. You had to hire maybe your own accountant, people to go over their numbers. What you mean you don't care? You trying to act cool? Well, all right, cool. All right, get robbed and be cool. Get robbed and be cool. I care about everything. You hear this bum ass thing? Why would I go check out? They said I could come look at the numbers. Why would I go check it out? I don't care. Nigga, you are doing this whole thing because of the numbers. Joe said it. The magic word in the room, the A word is called accounting. Are you dumb? This is exactly why when Joe counters their points by saying, y'all don't care about the business that I care about a lot, I have to agree with Joe. How could y'all complain about money and accounting and then the same breath also say you don't care? Question, I met with so much anger and tension off like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So my accountant gets on with wealth management. My lawyer gets on with wealth management. They even talk about, yo, just come down. We'll open shit up. You guys could look at it. I wasn't even going to go. Why would I go? I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my accountant can go mm -hmm. just to get the, the regular shit because maybe they have a lot going on and maybe my accountant can just look at it. And be like, all right, bet. That's the end of 2019. Pandemic hits. Who gives a fuck? No, we had a, we had a talk. No, because we can't skip over this. We had a talk before the pandemic hit about accounting again. And this was right after Cole passed away. And we were outside the studio. And he was the first. Because now I'm seeing this narrative that we're auditing him. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was the first one that even brought auditing to the table. When we asked him for accounting, he said... Y'all got accounting. We said, yeah, but that was wrong. It was a mistake on that. Like, where's the new one? And he was like, oh, y'all trying to paint me away, da, da, da. And I'm like, no, we just want the correct accounting. Oh, so well, then audit me then. I and I'm like, audit you? I don't like, want to Fam, that's nasty. I'm not taking my <laughs> niggas to court. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, that's just. Chad, I hate these bum ass niggas, man. Because I hate, yo. Chad. Do you understand that these niggas... I, I'm going to restate the position that I've heard. They feel Joe owes them millions of dollars. I've heard that Mealy Mole is like, fuck it. I guess we might not end up be friends, whatever, whatever. But the nigga owes me bread, and I want my money. Bro, Joe ain't going to just hand you out money. You probably are going to have to sue him. I hate that these niggas are still trying to drive home this narrative like they're too real for what's actually going on. This is a business dispute at this point, and lawyers are and will be involved. I remember a couple weeks ago, niggas was like, oh, Agua's lying. They're about to sue. Yes, nigga. Lawyers are going to be involved. Joe is not giving these bum-ass niggas millions of dollars out the blue for nothing. If they want it, they're going to have to sue. But you keep hearing these things. I don't want to. Bro, like, that's where y'all at with it, you dumb-ass nigga. This is not, but... But again, looking back, everything makes sense now. Like everything is starting to come together and, 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 and paint a picture because it's like, yo, why do you always get so hostile and so argumentative when we're trying to just get the business side right and focused and taken care of? Which isn't even a, a large part of the business, honestly. It's not. There's so much more. But to it's it. like, <laughs> fam, you got to remember, again, thing. we're profit partners. We're percentage based we have a percentage based contract, an agreement where we get a percentage off of everything that's coming in for the pot. So we have to see the money that's coming in. How else will we know what the fuck we getting? And then he had the nerve to say the last one of the last conversations we had. He tells me, oh, you got a calculator, right? Uh, yeah. And this is this is this for me. This that's is when my story. But this ahead. is when for me, I was like, OK, I'm going to have to pull away from this in a minute because. I don't even know who this nigga is anymore, and I don't know who this nigga think he talking to. And I'm, fam, I'm not trying to, that energy to me is corny to even have that type of
Chat, business and friendship don't work. I haven't spoke to Joe in weeks, so don't think that this is what Joe told No. If you ask me, Joe still feels a way because he brought it up randomly. That this nigga who was homeless, hiding detergent and Tide Pods under his pillow, and literally without a future, his brother didn't give a fuck about him, is now pressing him for money when Joe was nice enough to give him an opportunity. Again, Joe ain't the best CEO because Joe is also kind of like them in mixing feelings and business. So he's like, damn, a nigga who was living with me, like loafing off of me, selfish as fuck, hiding Tide Pods under his pillows, this motherfucker is, is pressing me about money? Maybe I can understand. Not saying Joe is right. Because business is business. But that's why when you go into business with your friends, you have to establish clear boundaries. Type of energy with, with niggas you call your friends. Like, I don't even want to have that type of energy on me. Right? So when he started talking like that, and I told you this, I said, fam, I'm not even sure who this nigga is anymore. Because he's saying things. He's moving a certain way. He's wearing funny hats. <laughs> I don't know who this nigga is. That's a great comment right there. He's, I don't know who this nigga is. He's saying things. He's moving weird. He's wearing funny hats. You know what Joe realized? You guys are replaceable. How did he find out that? He put two new niggas on for a couple of weeks. And people, first week, oh, what about the old guys? Second week, wait, the old guys not coming back the third week. Yo, these guys aren't that bad. The fourth week, oh, we fuck with them. The leverage was, let me, and Rory, this is why I hate bum ass things like you. You even said it. Part of you guys not showing up is kind of like when Joe tried to not show up for Friday episodes with Complex. I have the context because I worked at Complex. Joe came back with leverage because contracts changed because Joe wasn't there. The amount of money promised to, to, to Complex was changed because Joe didn't show up. So you know what? He came back with, oh, I got some leverage. You know why he said, and people do think, and I believe you lost leverage? Because your only leverage would be, well, if we not on the episode, people ain't going to tune in as much. Remember what I said earlier in the, in the stream? The people are there for Joe. Joe got the contracts and if Joe could pull similar views with whoever else what has changed he didn't have a proof of concept till he put in ice and ish for four weeks he did and the moment let me tell you you know the moment you got fired Rory the moment he realized he didn't need you anymore and that was the week you didn't show up it was a week that Ice and Ish did a great job handling the episode with him and Kevin Samuels that did like a couple million. It was the week he realized these dudes are pressing me for percentage while these dudes are lucky to be here. And that's why, Joe, I'm going to keep giving you the advice. Have no permanent host on your podcast. They will all eventually be entitled like Rory and Mealy Mall. Even if you fuck with him, bring him on for two weeks out of the month and bring on two or other new people for the other two weeks. Priceless advice. But I'm only giving it because Joe Mall got. I'm not looking for leverage. Right. If I was looking for leverage, that would come in renegotiation. Right. I'm not as fucking stupid as you think. Right. Stop with these narratives to, to dump. You are looking for leverage. Rory, who you think? You think niggas stupid? If you, you didn't show up to the new episodes, the nigga told you to take two episodes off. You didn't show up for three, three more weeks or four or five more weeks. You wanted to prove a point. That's called leverage. You wanted to prove that you are needed. 
And maybe he shouldn't have the error of judgment to tell you not to show up. That's proven a point. People that just think you smart. There was no, well, I wasn't looking for leverage on anything. I was trying to save this podcast mm -hmm. and I talked with my mans and I talked with you and I put together a list of what would happen on top of the things I needed as well. You said you was going to meet them, said, oh wait, that's all y'all need? R right. And then didn't meet them. Right. And then you was wondering why this didn't happen. Right. So some, I'm the one manipulating shit. You right. came to me and said I could easily make this. L let me help you out, Ruri. You know, in the terms of like, you know, a, a marriage, there's a term to call it's cheaper to keep her. Where, which means it's cheaper to be with her. Even if you cheat like a motherfucker, it's cheaper to be with her than go through a divorce. You know what Joe realized? It's cheaper to let y'all go. That's all that happened. It's business. But where do you break friendship and business? That's the problem. Because Joe's probably thinking, y'all expecting percentages, y'all doing audits, y'all barely showing up, y'all got stank attitudes, y'all doing this, y'all doing that. I just saw two new replacements who don't even care about percentages. They they just good if I just like send them cars every week and they'll show up for whatever. It's not cheaper to keep you bumps. It's cheaper to let y'all go. That's what he did. I keep saying y'all was trying to save the podcast. I keep telling you the podcast continues with or without you. So what did you save? You were trying to save your jobs. This shit happened. Came back. Nothing happened. Right. And, I, and, and another thing that I've seen people say, oh, you, you riding with Rory. I'm riding with what's right. I, did anyone ever think you was doing what was best for you and I was doing what was best for me? And we wasn't even riding for each other? Right. <laughs> And, and that, but see again, that's but that's why this is important because I, like I said, I didn't even want to do this. You didn't want to do this, but no, we, I we came to something. We was like, it's absolutely necessary because these narratives have to stop. We got to put it into this because this is not what happened. This is not the truth. And again, I give you a whole bunch of credit because when he told you to stay home, the first thing I told you was, I said, Rory, I'm not recording without you. I remember. I'm not doing that. I said because to me. That's nasty. It's basically saying like, you know, we go to the club, the bouncer say your man can't get in, he ain't got the right shoes on. And then we continue to go in the club. That's corny, I'm never doing that, fuck it, we all leaving. So when he said, he told you to stay home, nah, we not doing that. Go to the studio, Joe, let me holler at you. And we have the talk we have. And then that turns into something else. It's like, Joe, why is it always a problem when people are having a conversation about this show and you're not around. Like, do you feel like niggas is trying to conspire some shit behind your back? Because that's not what it is, bro. Niggas are having creative talks on how to make this shit better. How to grow this shit. Productive conversations. I said, but you being real defensive when you're not around and people are talking about the show. It's saying something. Same way six years ago when Elliot and I just went to lunch. Especially when you have a whole bunch of conversations about this podcast. And we're not around. And then we continue to be like, okay, let's roll with it. Let's roll with it. He owns it. He owns it. It's his to talk about, not yours. All right, cool. And again, we might have to take some onus in that because we probably let I'll that go on, for, on, on, on. We probably days. let that go on for too long. So cool. We'll take some onus on that. But then we had that talk and I'm just seeing him. I'm just like, oh, I, he thinks that he's really this, this new guy. Because I'm hearing it and the way he's talking to me and I'm just like, I think y'all got things twisted. No, I don't, we don't got nothing twisted. I think that money started to come in. You started to see more money than you ever seen in your life. You started to have conversations with niggas you wanted to have conversations with as a, as a rapper that would never talk to you. So I think that you starting to feel like this new person and you got this new leash on life, which is fine. I'm not love, even mad at that, but don't, don't bring that love, energy love that for my people. Keep that Just, energy with some groupie bitches. Keep that energy with some fans. Don't bring that energy to your niggas, though. You can have an ego with women and fans and all of that. Don't have no ego with your niggas that built something with you that was in the trenches with you like I was. A nigga that, a nigga that done been locked up with you like I was. And if you remember the conversation the three of us had that what we thought was productive, he said, yes, I like my ego. My ego is important in certain places. I should channel it better but I should never channel it the way I channeled it with my friends. This is his words, not mine.
But then what happened now? Like That's that went I'm out saying. the window? Because we had a five-hour conversation at his house. We thought we made some pro and 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 and, and be clear. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I gotta give my guy Rory props on this too. I was done with the pod after that no. <laughs> conversation we had. I was done. That's why that measly word and that like you ain't gonna never look me in my eyes. Bothered me so fucking much. I'm like, fam, I was the one trying to keep this shit together. I'm gonna give you that credit because I told you, I said, Rory, I would never sit down with him again. I said because I can't fake it. That energy, that chemistry, that laugh and shit, the fun, it's not there no more. When you look me in my eyes and tell me after all these years, all this grinding, all this building and pushing that we did, you tell me that this shit is none of my business. I can never unhear that, fam. I can never unhear you say that to me. And, and granted, maybe there's a, a bunch of adjectives for me for me trying to force this podcast to keep going. It's not measly. It's not liar. It's not manipulator. No. No, and and, and, Listen, I, and I'll have your back I, on that. It was for, never did that I, with you. Did I force something? Maybe. Did you I didn't. did I try too hard to make sure the shit? No, went, no, because I really thought we could get no, back to it. No, maybe. No, you know what you did? You did what you were supposed to do as a friend. Like, yo, fam, let's just make this shit right. Let's just make this shit right. Like, fuck it, man. We built something dope. Let's just. This is just a bump in the road. Let's patch this shit up. Let's keep it moving. Yeah. But I'm gonna be honest. Like I told you, I said, fam, I'm done. I had a two, I had a three hour FaceTime with Royce and we talked about everything. And he, I, te he, I text Royce afterwards after you called me and I thanked Royce. He talked, he <laughs> talked to me about a whole love, bunch love of slaughterhouse shit. You. He talked to me about a whole bunch of, you know, and it was like, but I'm telling Royce, I'm like, fam, just in the way I'm again, he had to pull up with Crook. Never, yeah. never put it out. I, I watched it. Never put it out. But it's a great pull up. He said something in that pull up. That when I saw it, it stuck with me. And when the shit fell apart with us, that shit played in my head. And him and Crook were talking about, Crook said something to the extent of, but bro, we have a contract with them. We got to honor our contract. We signed this. We agreed to this. We got to honor that. And his, Joe's response was, I don't give a fuck about no contract. I don't honor no contracts. And Crook just laughed like, all right, well, if that's how you feel, what are we even talking about? Like, I can't, it's no talking to you. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I'm like, you don't honor no contracts. Well, and here we are today. Well, also let's, let's get into some of that conversation that we had where Joe was saying, cause I, I, I want to make this as fair as possible. And I don't like to speak for people unless I speak for this them is correctly. all the truth. No, no. I, that's why I could sit here Joe, comfortably. Joe said, Joe what said, color is this? Is this like a, uh, uh, what's this? Uh, pistachio. Future. Let's call it pistachio. I'm sitting here in my pistachio. Teal. This, I'm, in, I'm in my teal pistachio. My calm is beautiful. My aura Joe, is... I'm, I'm, I'm great, man. Joe said he didn't even honor our contract and overpaid us because he said he looked at our contract and saw what that money would have been off our percentage base and said, ugh, I don't like it. I want this to be the last time we talk about this, so I'm even going to put in his good points that he said. Right. <laughs> Which, again, I'm not sitting here saying I didn't believe my mans when he said that. Right. <laughs> right. I did. Okay, cool. Yeah. And thank, I said, thank you. I said, yo, thank you. Yeah. That's fire. That's right. some real solid, right. real man shit to do. Right. But when we go back to the points of when we get our respected corners, let's figure out what makes this work for our friendship and the business side. Mm -hmm. Accounting got brought back into play from when it stopped with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And everyone made it clear. I don't care how far you dance around it. Just throwing numbers in an Excel spreadsheet is not accounting. It's not accounting. So, yes. Did I get accounting that said I was overpaid? Did I get accounting that said Joe is the greatest guy on earth? Of course. Mm -hmm. I did. And even then, did not say he was wrong. I said, just, yo, Fitch, just give me the regular accounting. Like, right. you taking a whole month and, and getting mad at me and resenting me because you've been overpaying me but didn't tell anyone. And you now have the accountants working on this instead of something else. And they're offended and this and that. Well, let's, let, let me be clear. I don't think we were overpaid. I'm still you don't, you I'm don't still sit, on the side sit, of you don't sit. On I don't that, know anything. You don't no. <laughs> That's been sure. my issue the but whole I'm time. Ju I'm just going with I'm just going with the optic. You don't sit you don't sit on the set and talk about me and talk about you the way he did, and then underneath all of that you're you're overpaying somebody. You it right. don't add, it don't let's, it don't right. add. Let's up. Let, let's say I'm overpaid. It don't add up. Let's I'm say sorry. I'm overpaid. That don't that energy don't even match. Let's let's you don't overpay people that you feel like that about and that you end up talking about like Yo, I'm t i am hope these niggas never do a podcast. Yo, these niggas is boring as watching paint dry. Bro, I'm about to fall asleep over here, man. Like, what are they talking about? Said this is about money. 
Rory's asking about money. Let's dead that now. Spotify deal is about to end. Even before we even went into negotiations, Joe had said to me, on some friend shit, we was at lunch, he said, I already don't think this is going to be a good situation for us. I said, bet. I've been saving my money. Fuck Spotify. If they come back with a crazy amount of number, but it don't make sense for us, fuck it. I don't mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. I've been saving my money. I don't splurge like that. I'm mm -hmm. chilling. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I think it was six or seven months before our deal even ended. So I was like, let's just get back. Nobody go crazy with their bread. And if we got to go independent, we got to go independent. That's great. Whatever. That's just probably a cool scenario. You don't have to worry about me at all. Mm -hmm. Don't ever make a decision. And I've I said this to him a thousand times during that Spotify deal. That's why this also offends me off his shit. I said, don't ever think you have to worry about me with money. Mm -hmm. Don't ever. Further proof, as I kept telling y'all, man, this fucking bum ass, bitch ass nigga never knew a fucking thing about a Spotify deal, man. Get this bozo out of here, man. Ever make a decision about me mm -hmm. that has to do with making sure I'm paid. Right. I love you for that, but don't ever do it. Mm -hmm. Cash app deal comes around. Pardon, his cash app deal for his pull-ups, according to him. Mm -hmm. We leave Spotify. He starts bringing in cash app to our podcast. Amazing. Love that. Cool. I get an email from the accounting company, CC'd with Ian, on what a payment is going to be per month. This is the cash app deal. Yep. Naturally, as I always, always do, and as I told Joe, since the day we started doing business together, I don't care if it's $10 or $10 billion, I'm going to ask, so what is it? Mm -hmm. Cash App deal was great. It was around the exact same money, if not a couple hundred dollars more than what we were doing with Spotify per month. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Love you for getting that. My dude. Mm -hmm. Just ask, so what is this? Right. Simple, simple question. Mm -hmm. Left it alone. Didn't even really get an answer. Didn't particularly care. Right. Everything's cool. We in a pandemic. We don't have a deal. You out there getting us money. My God. Fuck with you. Don't right. care. Whatever. This is about the show. Respect. All right, chat. Yo, yo, yo. Fuck this bum ass dude. 6 9 keep calling me. He won't talk to y'all. I told him I'm on stream. He said, who cares? You always call me while you're on stream. I don't mean this nigga. Jesus Christ. Yo. Man, I'm on my stream, man. Like, like we told about some important. Tell the boys I said what up. Now the chat, they fuck with you, man. They they hear, man. They just they, they they like we've been clowning them. Um... Yo, tell the chat, tell the chat instead of donating to you today and and giving you money on Twitch. No, I'm broke. I'm broke. I need it. My birthday's coming up. I need it. I need it. Don't don't do that. No, no, no. But for today, tell them to help out my GoFundMe. My GoFundMe. You gotta go fund me for what? You broke? Go on my page. I'm trying to help Little Reese buy a new car because he keeps stealing people's cars and the owners are tracking him down and shooting him. It's not safe. Tell him to go fund. I, I started to go fund me to buy him at least a used Honda Civic 1999 Impala. You know, something. What are you talking about right now, brother? We need to keep the streets safe. Yeah, hold on. Hey, by the way, condolences to uh, you, Little Reese. Like, you know... Uh, we Little Reese in his situation, apparently he was, um, you know, um, he was shot. Um, again, we love Little Reese over here. I know, I, me too. If I didn't love Little Reese, I wouldn't start a GoFundMe for him. I started to GoFundMe because. Listen, Are you serious? You started to GoFundMe? As, as black, as black and Hispanic minority people, we need to stop killing each other and make and help each other out so i started to go fund me because instead of stealing people's cars why not help another brother out and helping him buy a car wait wait, 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 wait. explain this to me what do you mean stealing cars i i'm, I'm not really up on all right so based on based on i, I don't think you read Yo, i'm I, I wait, read wait, wait 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 i'm on here. I read the article i read the article you posted I copied and pasted. I copied and pasted. I didn't read it. Oh, okay, so 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 in the article it says in the article it says that he stole somebody's Durango, and I said, wait. Even though you know me and Lil Reese don't get along too well. So I said, 
you know what? This is still a black brother, a black king. And and me being a Hispanic, we both come from minorities. I said, you know what? Let me help the brother out if he's still in cars and he and he need to get around. You know, I know he sold four K. I think he sold about four K units. Album sales. Wait, 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 wait. Again, I can't, I did, I did, I did really didn't read what I posted. I just knew he got shot. Wait. Yeah. So allegedly he are wait my phone just, just ended. Say Star has a post that he has a GoFundMe for a little Reese. Let me call him back. I think his phone died. This guy needs Jesus. If their phone rings, it means that their phone didn't die, right? Okay, anyway, all right, he'll call back, he'll call back. Anyway, he was blowing my phone up. Um, you know, I heard, uh, if you don't know, Lil Reese was shot earlier today. There's some very disturbing footage of him bleeding on the ground, eyes drawn on the back of his head. Um, I love Lil Reese um, as an artist. I think he's a cool person. And while, you know, certain artists, they're around certain environments, it look like he's always still in Chicago. I go, um, this is the second time he's been, I want to send my, well, that's about it when it comes to my comments more surround that situation. Obviously, 6 9 and Lil Reese has a little, I'm hoping he pulled from my scene. I've seen like a couple of reports. It looks like he may be in stable condition. You know, as much as we are, God is clearly walking with that young man because to be shot in the neck by a fucking, like, some high-powered rifle, and then later being shot up close, and, like, just even the video I saw, it didn't look like someone who was going to make it. Um, allegedly, he is in stable condition, and I'm hoping that is true. My heart goes out to him, his family, and I hope he realizes that he's always going to be a target if he's around that particular area. I think Lil Reese needs to move out of Chicago. I think a little older he's getting he's not seventeen no like most of these niggas that was maybe eighteen. Just to remind you, twenty twelve was ten years ago. If you was eighteen and twelve it's a long time ago. So I hope, you know, uh if he survives all this he can life a little bit different. Um I'm monitoring that situation. I'll give you updates on my YouTube channel. But I send my heart. My heart goes out to Lil Reese. Very good guy. You know, um, I always like th there's a duality to a lot of people who are in hip hop that you might see involved with certain shit. Not a lot of them want to be involved with all this shit by choice. Situations that kind of just like they're either born into or they have to live with based on I'm wishing the best for Lil Reese. OK, um, let's get back to the Stooges. I didn't want to talk about Lil Reese to the end because I feel so bad for Lil Reese, but for the Stooges, I don't feel bad at all, okay? But anyway, let's get back to the Stooge. And Respect. Patreon deal comes around. I find out on the air with no, the rest of y'all. No, I saw we, all y'all jokes. We they, don't know they, anything about They it. were correct. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. Had Let's no be idea. transparent. Got on there. All right, you're the head of creator equity. Cool. But prior to that page with our shit. Right. Which, by the way, is not, you don't have to have a deal with Patreon to start a Patreon page. Right. So when we have conversations prior to this, I'm not thinking, okay, this is a Joe deal. And I also asked, I said, I even asked his manager, is this a Joe Budden network deal? Like, is this going to have, see the All thing the other is, shows, right. can't, like, just because, right. and not even on some crazy shit, just on, well, let me just try to figure out what this is so I can mm -hmm. know how to move mm -hmm. 
with it. Mm-hmm. I'm not here to disrupt things. I'm mm-hmm. just asking what the fuck is going on. Right. He gets on there. We congratulate him for his, his position. Still love you, Joe, for getting that position. That's amazing. Patreon's great. I get a call from Ian. Hey, the accountant's going to reach out to you. This is going to be the monthly fee for Patreon. Yep. Was the number crazy per month? Absolutely. Good, great money. It's a lot of fucking money. Great money. A lot of fucking money. Mm-hmm. When I see a lot of money, do I automatically think, oh, there must be more? No. no. I just ask, so what is this based off of? Because from my understanding, at this point, this was a, a Joe Budden podcast thing. Mm-hmm. What his manager said. This, him and his manager, Ian, shout out, Ian. I'm, again, I'm not here to, to assassinate anyone's character. I say to Ian, yo, I've been stacking my bread. I'm fine. People look overworked and we're doing a lot of shit right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I can just tell the morale is, I can just see it that people are just overworked. No, no, no. It wasn't being, seeing it. They, they expressed it to us. I'm, it's not my place. You fucking lazy bums talking about overworked. Yo, Ruri, I got about 30 niggas who worked on that podcast. Academics got academics, 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 Livingston Allen, academics, Livingston Jr., that's what my mama called me, academics, and I do all this shit by myself. You fucking lazy dweebs. You see why when I make my millions, I feel happy? Because I did all this shit my goddamn self. You niggas got 30 niggas working, I told my y'all overworked. Fuck is you overworked for, nigga? What are you talking about? You show up once a week. Oh, my bad. I forgot. Spotify happened. So you show up twice a week. You feel overworked? You feel overworked? You're overworked. You show up twice a week. You're overworked. Really? Wait. Are, wait. No, no. I, I can't believe. Wait. Two times a week, you're overworked. Maybe I'm really Jamaican Jamaican because... I worked at Complex from Monday to Thursday, and then they would fly me out sometimes on the weekend to some strange-ass place, Atlanta. Oh, go to L.A. to film to film on the sticks, and I never felt I was overworked. I felt this was regular. You know why? Because I work for what I want. I work for what I want to gain. I don't know how Joe or whoever the fuck fooled y'all, but you show up two times a week. And you're saying you're overworked. Holy. You see why I catch feelings and I feel a certain type of way? When you bums start talking about niggas like me? Nigga, I can't even sleep six hours in a row. I just fucking wake up. Because I feel I'm missing out on some shit. Whether it's Instagram, Twitter. Having a meeting. Doing content, streaming anything i gotta do and you niggas show up two times a week and you're saying you're overworked if only i could be y'all except if i could be y'all i wouldn't have what i have so when i see niggas like y'all can like even ever talk about me and i'm telling y'all any media nigga talks about me in 2021 the violation make rural Immediately more, I killed their ghost at this point. Any media nigga talks about academics in a disparaging way without acknowledging my work, how I change this industry, I will violate y'all to the utmost of my ability. I love this. I love drama. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody love drama like me. Y'all know when all these niggas talk about me now, they just be like, uh, I don't know nothing. Yeah, good. Keep it like that. I watch all y'all niggas talk about me now, and I'm like, what are you going to say? Good. Keep it like that. Keep it like that. I work the hardest. I could call names. None of these niggas work harder than me. Well, I'll, I'll call them out right now. Who work harder than me? Tell me. Who? When I show up to complex that ask me if I had a staff for 30. For eight. It wasn't eight. Who? Joe don't work half as hard as me. Joe got all type of niggas. I still edit every video you see go on my YouTube. I still stream. I don't got nobody with me, nigga. I do all this shit myself. Don't talk. I love Joe. Facts. Who work hard as me? Who? Y'all can't name nobody. Somebody said Phoebe. 
Maybe if he work, if he do work hard, she she you know she on the blog side of things. None of these things work hard as me, man. Nigga, I have to cut off friends, women, anybody. If you can't understand how I get down in media and how this is my life, I never have fun on vacation. I have fun. Nigga, I was at the gun range earlier. I couldn't wait to get home. I had to stop it. Uh, uh, I had to stop it because, like, I had to stop a motherfucking Chipotle. I'm like, nigga, I need to get home to get on stream. Nigga, I live this shit. This is all my life. I, after this shit, I can just go to sleep. I'm good. I'm good for the day. This is all my life. I don't have, like, personal life. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Somebody said YB work better. Salute to young boy, man. Young, yeah. Um, on another stream, I read read the letter that young boy wrote. Somebody said act birth to a lot of these YouTubers. Nah, I ain't gonna do all that. That's not this type of stream. I'm just saying. My whatever you might consider it. It's because of hard work. So when I hear this, these entitled bums, who. No matter what they're saying about how they help build some shit, bro, they join the podcast with a star on it. Do you know how easy it is? Yo, there's so many podcasters in the world that don't have a star as their co-host and they have to go build an audience from scratch and they don't feel entitled. These niggas got on a podcast with a star and literally they're complaining about how they had to work hard. All their work had to entail was showing up twice a week. They didn't have to promote all the time. They didn't have to tweet all the time. They didn't have to fucking try to figure out a way to make their shit pop. Instantly it was happening because a nigga who was already lit is on their shit. And they're talking about they're working too hard. These fucking bums. Are you serious? You know how many great people I watch? There's a chick I fuck with a lot. She does a, she does a great podcast. I'm watching this shit. I'm like. She doesn't get the fucking easy pass of everybody knowing about this shit. She got to put work in. I look at her story from, from week to week. She how it goes. You have these entitled motherfuckers who literally get to piggyback off somebody else. And they're saying, oh, we're working too hard twice a week. Oh, my God. Niggas are slaving us. What? Place to say, even no, though they said. It's my place to say. No, no. Even though they said their place about me. I still don't return the favor when people do shit to me. I'm saying it. People expressed. That they were overworked and underpaid. So, what? I say to Ian, and Ian and Joe, I don't care what narratives you spend, anything, whatever. I said to Ian, don't pay me this month or next. Don't, don't give me that amount of money. I remember. And that was a lot of fucking money. Yeah. I said, don't pay me. Let's put it into production. Let's put it into the guys. This is not about money to me. Let Let's keep this shit moving. Right. Like, I don't need this shit. Right. We could just stick to whatever contract. I don't need this. Like, I don't need it right now. Because you, you even came to me with that. You was like, yo, we should, the first month, Patreon check, we should both just give it to <laughs> the guys. Yeah. Camera guys, Savon, like, Alex, fam, these people, Parks. Everyone looks Parks. like they're Parks. Wor working crazy. Parks. Like, they're working crazy. Like, let's just give them that. Me and Ian have a great fucking conversation. I get a call early, early in the morning. You're ungrateful. <laughs> Back to when you said you were talking to Joe. At this point, this was the first time. Man, cut these bum ass niggas off. Yo, Yo what happened, nigga? My, my phone died. Hey, man. I, I don't know if my phone died or the Green Reaper. The, the, his soul nah. is on him. Man, hey. <laughs> what y'all doing? Right? Hey, hey, listen, man. No, yo, I seen a very nasty video that will never share on my platform. Man, I feel so bad. I, I feel yo, so. Look. Yo, act. You see the difference between me and Reese? Well, where am I at right now? Describe to, you, to, the, to the fans and Twitch. Where am I at right now? You in the car with your mans, looking like you're driving on the highway, cooling. All right, so look. So look. What is that, a Range Rover? What's that? Yeah, yeah, but I own this car. You got a bulletproof?
it's a buying a property or Oblock, and put some money, $2,000 to buy your friend a car. Right or wrong? Well, we don't know why that shooting really happened fully. Like, we read the article, but, like, but, 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 like, hold on. If somebody stole your car, you would shoot them? Come on now. No, me, no. Nah, I'm, not, I'm not a gangster. That's the thing. You're not no gangster no more? I'm not no gangster. Come on, man. We all know that. <laughs> I thought you was a gangster before you got locked up. I mean, we thought King Bone was a gangster before he died. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. <laughs> like, like, come on. Like, what? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, we thought he was a demon. Yeah. We thought he was a demon. We thought no lackey. Remember, remember, remember? I can never lack no lackey. Remember? To be a demon, you gotta be in hell. You heard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have do, do you have some sympathy? Do you have some sympathy for at least what happened to my man Reese? Do I have some yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, and by the way, and by the way, by the way, six. Like maybe like I think about shit wrong. I don't even think your Reese never did nothing to you. Like what he did to you? Pop shit. Mad people talk shit. Huh? Right. Bro, I just... Yo, why? Why gotta be me? Why did I have to start the GoFundMe for Lil Reese call? Why couldn't one of his friends... Why couldn't one of his friends lend him their call? He could have asked me to lend some shit. Yo, act. You think if you ask to lend one of my calls, I'm gonna say no? Be honest. Yes or no? I think you let me hold it, but hold on, but but I don't think I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think that's the reason why. I think that's somebody who probably wanted to get in front of. I don't think nobody shot him over a car. I'm gonna be honest with you. No way. It sounds unbelievable. Yeah, I just say, yo, I, I just want to see. I just I just want to see him get a full recovery. I want him to um, fully recover from this. He was already shot in the neck, right? He was already uh, 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 jumped. Got, um, well, I didn't really see nobody jump him. One guy made him shit on himself. And then this. Like, sometimes you got to understand that this street life, he's trying to hold on to that Grim yeah, Reaper name. And, now, that's the Grim Reaper. Like, yeah, no, and, and I understand. But it just looks at this point like the Grim Reaper is getting tortured, beat up, extorted, robbed, shot, crazy. And I don't want to see a uh, black brother, you know, deal with that type of pain. Did you donate to the GoFundMe? I created the GoFundMe. No, no. Did you donate, though? You Don't, don't create it. Donate, nigga. You see, the way my bank account is set up. I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Man. <laughs> I think his phone died again. I don't know what's up with that guy, man. <laughs> anyway, back to Mealy Mall and Rory. Who am I talking to? I wake up to someone screaming. You're into the phone of how ungrateful I am. Yeah. How I don't give a fuck about anybody. Yeah. Any of this. And I'm like, what are you? Joe, I said, don't pay me. Right. And he's like, yo, you know, Patreon got no, f has none of the fuck to do with you. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Fuck all this. This ain't just shit. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck are you even talking about shit? I'm like, your manager called me in a payout for Patreon. I said, just give it to everyone else. Right. I don't know what the fuck you're talking thought about. thought you were being a stand up honorable guy. <laughs> I don't even, I just think that's just some yeah. shit to do for the bigger picture yeah. for everybody. I don't care about money. Right. So he screams, and I'm like, yo, I don't even know who I'm talking to. When I met Joe, he probably had one of the bigger egos I'd ever met in my life. At this point, I'm like, yo, who? I don't even know who I'm Same talking to anymore. I don't know who I'm talking to anymore. Like, who is this guy? So that happens. With an Amiri hat on. <laughs> I don't know if it's a fact that he had an Amiri hat on during that phone yeah. conversation. <laughs> he definitely had it on. If you got that hat on at 7 a.m. For sure. <laughs> definitely had it on. You a sick dude. <laughs> so he does that, and I think it's the weirdest fucking thing on earth. But I'm still cool. Still don't think anything of it. They send the Patreon money to me and back to psychoanalyzing your friends. Back to me starting to think about old shit. I'm like, all right, this shit is kind of weird. So yeah, when I hear Joe say... Are you good now, nigga? Nah, yeah, 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 I'm good, I'm good. He and Drake almost pulled a million people on on, on Instagram Live like two nights ago. almost. Nah, nigga, done. Nah, nah, um, you know, you know, yo, listen, you know, at the end of the day, I'm Nikki is lit. I didn't even realize how lit. Yo, that Barb fan base? Oh, my God. Nigga, nigga, what do you mean that? Y'all Barb fan, I'm a Barb, nigga. You're not no fucking Barb. 
Yeah, yo, well, well I, I saw that and I'm like, yo, bro, you've been a little bit distant from like your audience, man. Like, is this a good move? I don't think it's a good move. But they want to see you. They want to hear you. Yo, I, am I fucking, am I fucking saying anything bad? I'm like, pray for the guy. He's still going for some country. That's it. Like, I'm asking for prayers. I'm not laughing at him. No, 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 no. Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your audience wants to see you drop music and want to see you do stuff. Why aren't you doing stuff? Of course. Of course. Of course. I told you. Yo, I, I'm going to make this real clear, right? Real clear, and I'm going to state this one more time for everybody who's wondering why is he not dropping music? Why is he not getting on live? Why is he not on Instagram? Why? Right now in my life, Instagram, it's not lit no more. It's not fun. Nothing's going on. When I am not on Instagram, Instagram is boring. The internet is boring. The moment I want to be on Instagram, there's stuff to talk about. Everybody's having fun. Everybody's tuning in. I'm the most lit person in the fucking world. It's that. It's only me. I'm the only one to talk about. Sometimes I step back from music, step back from what I love doing, because there's so much fake things going on. You have people rapping about killing, shootings, and murders. Nobody's dying. The only people that are dying is the people who are the most gangster. You know what I'm saying? It's not real anymore. Rap is not real. People get a shot, killed, and it's only happening to the most gangster rappers right now. Right? You don't see no... Wait, 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 wait. But what does that have to do with you being around and putting out music? Like, people... Oh, no, no. Yo, 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 there's somebody who says... I just want to hear 6 9 talk his shit. Why doesn't he drop more music? Because, and I'm telling you again, it's not fun. It's not real. When I rap, it's real. When I say shit in my songs, it's real. Everything's real. Everything. I just got out of racketeer charges for shootings, robberies, attempted murders, everything. It's real. Nothing else for you to do. Well, they're gonna they're gonna say that. Well, okay, that's a past life. Like they're gonna say your new music ain't about stuff you're doing. So how is that real? Well, in my new music, right? I said, I said, I said, get out the way. I'm coming through. Boom, go get your fans up. In the dirt, go pick your mans up. Everything is real. What is not real? Talk that high shit. We first drop shit. When I shot shit, you cop and we first drop shit. All right, let me let me ask you real quick. Yo, are you wishing bad for everybody that that hated on you? I feel like you wish. I feel like every time something bad happened to them, you're like, told you. Oh, yo, yo, academics. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, you are the only person that never you said. A, you don't believe in the six nine curse. Wait. No, I don't believe in it. But you're the only person that didn't wish. You're the only people that didn't. You're the only person that didn't wish. Rest in peace to Shadow, who held you down for mad, mad years. Shadow stole money from me. Who? And Don. Bro, but he passed away and he defended you. Six, one of the times when I didn't really want to come around you because you had Shadow made me confident, like, okay, you're going to be safe. He protected your life for a long time. Shadow, Shadow stole money from Sam. Shadow stole money from me. Shadow stole money from Don. The best he got fired because he was costing the money. What, what are you saying? But he passed away. You, you Like, despite that, you can't, you got to get I past it. You know, when, you, know, you know when you grow up and your mom say, if you don't have nothing good to say, don't, don't say, say nothing at all. What's the problem? You don't really think there's a six nine curse, do you? I mean, think about everybody who died and I mean, have problems. With it. Okay. Is that, is that Just think about all the rappers. No. There's a lot of rappers who passed away. Not all of them have problems with you. Just start stating the rappers that recently died. Recently, um. DMX had no problems with you. Juice World, Pop Smoke. Juice World didn't have no problems with you. Stop it. I don't really want to no, hear. No, no. Me, and, me and Juice World. It was cool. Me, no, me and Juice World. Once you take that leap of faith out there. Me and Juice World were mad cool. 
me and Juice World, I, I had nothing but love for Juice World. Juice right. World loved me. You know that. We had conversations and the he had that. But remember when Juice World first started his career? He would go on stage every every city for his first tour and scream, fuck six nine, fuck six nine, fuck six nine, fuck six nine. You don't remember? You were the one posting it. You're right. You're right. And then me and Juice World. But hold on, but he also said, I ain't gonna lie, that nigga is entertaining. He said that. No, but yeah, but I took he DM me that. That's the only reason it got out. And then off the strength of Cole Bennett, our mutual friends, we got on the phone and Juice World was like, yo, da -da -da, and then he came to New York, he did powerhouse, da -da -da. we didn't get to really chill because I was in and out. Juice World was my friend. But let's go back to the six nine curse. You can't. Are we calling the, the, the? You can't do. You can't. You can't do. I don't think you could do Vaughn. All right, all right, all right. So my thing is this. I look. Hold on. I'm gonna post it on my story. You post it on your page and say, "Is there such thing as a six nine curse?" And see what the fans. I post it right now. Go. All right, I'm gonna do it on my thing. And then, and then, cause this, I, I believe in a six nine curse. Chat. I don't really like. I don't believe that everybody. Who has this like six nine something happened to them that's not good, which would be a curse. I really don't believe it, chat. Like, like, come on now. Like, Lil Reese has issues and has had issues. He's not nothing is happening because of six nine. All right, Nipsey was coming out of his face right before he died. Yeah, he told he said he was gonna shit out of you. Yeah, yeah, but I wouldn't say that's an academics curse. That that's that's something that, to be honest, I wish me and Nipsey talk. Like to be honest, yo, it, we had such a real conversation. He was like, yo, listen, I just had to tell you why I had to go at you publicly, because I felt that you had a big platform and you were saying certain stuff publicly that I wasn't with. And he's like, but now we got to talk, we could build. So when I saw he passed away. You know, the fans going to look at it a certain way, but I, I actually look at that like it's stunted. Bro, like, it could be, who knows? Me and Nipsey could have, like, done something together. But, like, when someone dies or, or their life gets cut short, like, you never see that. Like you said, could have. No, listen, that, that don't got nothing to do with me. All, all I'm seeing six nine curses, bro, I, 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 it's up, so go. Let's see what the fans got to say. No, no, no way. Yo, 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 Chad, do y'all believe there's a 6 9 curse? I like it, sounds ridiculous. Yo, if... Did my phone cut off or his? I think his cut off. All right. I don't think there's a 6 9 curse. I'm gonna be honest. Okay, let's listen to these two bozos one more time. Hey, Drill or whoever else, cut the 6 9 shit out of the Ruri shit. Okay, just cut it out. All right. At the end of that episode, let's do it for free now. It's on friendship. Ain't no business at all. Let's just do this shit for free. I've been on that time. Right. <laughs> this is not about money. Because even before the Cash App shit, which then he then threw back in my face when I said, yo, don't worry about me. And they did the Cash App thing. And I said, what is this? It's like we weren't supposed to ask anything. We were supposed to just go with whatever they were putting in front of us. And it's like, but this, it don't work like that. Yo, the, the conclusion of this entire, entire thing was me going, yo, so what is that? And then met with crazy anger. That's what this entire, like, we could chop this entire thing down to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, when you start questioning where money is coming from and where it's going. Accounting. That's all this shit is about. We asked to see the accounting because we have a profit agreement. We have a percentage-based agreement with each other. I never did it maliciously. Never did it with accusations. Never insinuated anything. Our lawyers never got crazy. Joe and I even went back... Uh, when we were talking at his crib about my lawyer being spicy on shit, and I read the email back to him. Very polite. And my account. Very professional. My account said, it's lovely to meet everyone. Let me know when you guys are ready to work. But, <laughs> but again, it only they only say that because they don't even want to be questioned about the accounting. They don't want to be questioned about anything. So when somebody even raises a question, it's a problem. You got to know that people can tell what that is. If every time I ask a question, you get upset, we know what that is, fam. And and for so many years, didn't think about it, didn't cross my mind. That's my guy, not thinking anything like that. But then once we put that list together, we even came back and had that episode, which still didn't really sit right with me with everything Joe was saying, because it was a complete polar opposite of everything he said when you and I had that amazing conversation for six hours at his crib. Like, it was just all that adding up. And then 
the conversations between my lawyer and his on, hey, this is, no, this is our stance. And I was like, all right, cool. Now I'm gonna make my decision. And mind you, during that entire break that we had with the pod, not you and I, but the entire pod, I didn't hear from Joe. I didn't hear from Ian. My lawyer replied to them off what they said from the accounting. And I heard nothing. Monday, I get a call from Ian. Yo, this is just the stance. This is just what it is. So, okay. I'll make a decision with my lawyer. This is Monday. We record Tuesday. Hit Ian, yo. I'm going to make a decision with my lawyer. And then have the, yo, you you didn't show up again. Like, I told you, I'm going to go make a decision with my lawyer off everything that we agreed upon to move this shit forward. We we had a conversation (laughs) and he said, oh yeah, I'm going to be transparent. You know, everything is going to be, you know, sent up. Y'all niggas stop lying. Millie Moore, I told you, your people hit me. Well, not, not even hit me, but they, we happened to talk and they were like, yo, just to let y'all know, because we fuck with you, Aki. You know, it's chat niggas over everything. <laughs> That's what they said. Chat niggas around the world. They were like, yo, yeah, these niggas are playing another strike. They're not about to go to work. There won't be a podcast with them niggas on Wednesday. There won't be a podcast later on. They're going to be holding out until certain things are met. And Joe just took the onus on himself to say, bro, I ain't about to do this. Keep doing this with y'all bum ass niggas. Y'all are fired. Y'all were planning a strike. Like, y'all got to admit these things. How the fuck did I know? Joe, if Joe knew this before, he would have probably tweeted it out. If you think Joe told me this, if Joe knew three days before y'all didn't show up that y'all were going to go and strike again, you think he wouldn't tweet it out? These niggas are fired? Y'all were planning to not show up. That's the truth. I agreed that he had handled it incorrectly before. The accounting shit should have been easy all for everybody. Of that. We covered all of that. I'm not putting words in anyone's in mouth. a five-hour five conversation, happened. and then we, get, we end up in the same place where we were before. An Excel spreadsheet that's supposed to be accounting that anybody can just go in and punch numbers in. And... No, we're not at liberty or whatever they said. We, we're not showing the Spotify deal. Okay. What happened to transparent? What what the fuck happened to transparency and all this other shit that we just spent five hours in the house talking about? Got to lean into narratives, man. That's that's what happened that entire episode. Lean Listen, man. I, lean into the tension him and I had. Uh, we could even talk about uh, that weirdo at conversation that he talked about uh, with everyone, with Corey and everyone in the room saying, oh, Roy was upset that I would work with academics. Y'all were talking about it. I was sitting on the couch and I heard it. And yes, I chimed in. I said, oh, you would? <laughs> and you said, yeah. I said, okay. I think that's weird. Mm-hmm. I just think that's weird. Right. And I won't get into our further conversation upon why I thought that was weird. It was weird. But that was it. And again, I psychoanalyzed my friends too. Just said, all right, cool. That did not start our attention. Did that episode suck? Yes, it did. But we... Roy! Let me tell you this. Joe will always want to work with the bag securer. He's about a bag. Joe and Rory, bag is this. Joe and big fucking academics, the bag is this. You know why? Joe brings this, I bring this. Same or, or you could say either or. I don't give a fuck. But the bag is much bigger. You are getting over 400000 Listen, the bag that was waiting for me and Joe, if we ever do something, 400000 might be a month or two of pay. The fuck? You niggas is disgruntled over that over six years. I'm sorry. He will not cut off his nose to spite his face. He will not tell you. Who's a worker? I won't go secure. You're putting a lot of groundwork into this shit. Your goal is just to pay your light bill, your rent, and have a little bit of money that when your girl catch you cheating with your side chick, that you can be like, oh, well, let me go do this. That's it, bro. You don't compare. Ruri, Joe will always want the bag. I want the bag too. Imagine a bum ass nigga. If I hired a nigga and who say, yo, act, you'd work with Joe again. Bitch nigga, if you got an opinion about this, leave. I'll fuck with Joe. 
And if business is right for me, and you know how I get given up on business, if business happens to be right for me, and the situations is right, why would I not work with Joe Budden? Why not? There is millions earmarked that's sitting there from any company that wants to do business to reunite Joe Budden and academics in any format. Why would I say no? Because of Rory? You think I didn't feel a certain type of way? I'm like, damn, that's Joe's man who showed up to the crib. Joe could have prevented that. Joe could have did this. You think I took that out on Joe? No. No. You could take out whatever you want on Joe, but the answer won't change. Joe is here to secure bags. Joe has done shows with people he likes and people he dislikes. Joe has been on Love & Hip Hop with people he cared about and people he ain't care about. Okay? It's not that personal. Maybe it is for you. But for him, it's not. And trust me, a big bag that's always looming out there is you put academics and Joe in one stage. And keep in mind, I know all this going into, say, let's say me and Joe get on a show. It might be three months in, six months in, a year in, two years in. And you might say, yo, Joe, what you think about acting? And be like, yo, that nigga's a bitch. I hate him. But you know what? Those checks going to keep coming in because you know what? It's engaging content. Me and that nigga is somehow magnetic to the audience. I don't know. I can't stand him sometimes. He can't stand me. But you know what? Unlike you bitch ass niggas, but maybe I had a reason to be bitch ass niggas. Y'all wasn't getting paid, according to y'all. Bring the millions over here for me and Joe. Me and him will fight all day on camera. He love drama, I love drama. I'll diss him, he'll diss me. Listen, I'll get my feelings, he'll get his feelings. But you know what? We gonna keep this shit fucking going. I'm sorry. Don't get mad at me and don't get mad at him, okay? I don't know why I'm being brought up as a reason why you enjoy beefing. You're beefing with him because he will never look at you as a boss. We were fine after that for a bunch of episodes. I tried, I tried, I tried. He was as transparent as could be. Joe, if you don't realize at this point, because you need to care about this, I'm telling you as a business owner to another business owner, these niggas... This ain't even about your reputation as a creator. You're always going to be talented. Nobody will ever sign to the Joe Budden podcast if you have these two stooges basically claim you're a thief. I wouldn't possibly entertain business with a nigga who's a thief. This is why you have to violate him. Not even violate him, but you have to be transparent. Again, they're calling you a thief. They're calling you dishonest. And when all these bitch ass things are like, oh, Ak is talking to Joe. No, I'm telling you how a business owner has to deal with it. There came out the niggas who people have now grown some trust over trust equity over years because you kept seeing these faces. Is they're saying Joe or Joe's manager or somebody around Joe is dishonest. Bro, you think, yo, you know why Birdman pulled up on Charlemagne? Birdman pulled up. Joe, take the kitty gloves off and you have to be transparent. Don't listen to me. You might think I'm instigating. I'm telling you how I would deal with these bum ass niggas. I, I keep saying, I'll embarrass me to embarrass you, but you'll never call me a liar. And you'll never have the narrative that I'm robbing niggas. Joe's mission for the last year is to build a network. What they're saying is that Joe's playing with money, robbing people, blah, blah, blah. Bro, that's that's ending you as a businessman. I see how Joe does it, but he's been keeping the kitty gloves on with these niggas. Let me just tell you this. These niggas just clearly said for an hour, and we've listened to an hour and one minute so far. They're saying Joe ain't keeping it real. Joe is hot and shit. Joe, we don't know if it's, he's being dishonest, his manager, but somebody's over there being dishonest because we ain't getting shit and we're owed money. Let's see how Joe deals with it. I'll play the last couple minutes, six minutes left, and then I'll get the fuck off of here. To a point where for, so for years we up. dealt. We for years oh we kept it pushing and kept recording. After receiving, what made the show work was the chemistry between us. 
the energy between us. And like I said, once you tell me that this is none of my business, I don't I can't I can't sit here and bust it up and and crack jokes and and try to act like I fuck with you. Like I'm not fake. I can't do that. I can't I can't perform like that. I'm not a fake guy. Like I'm not going to sit here and act like you didn't just tell me that a show that I help build with you and push with you and and grow with you is none of my business. Like we're not doing that. You can never talk to me and disrespect me like that and think that I'm going to sit on the couch and be like, yeah, you know, Sweetie was looking good. We're not doing that. <laughs> I mean, she looks good, though. She looks great. But I don't want to sit here and talk to you about it no more. That's a fact. And that's all it was for me. It was like, yo, I'm done. I told you I was done. And like I said, speaking to you, speaking to Royce, speaking to my brother and, you know, Biggs was real instrumental in that, too. Like he, he talked to me a lot and we talked about a lot of Rockefeller shit he dealt with. And, you know, he. He brought light to a lot of shit, but he, you know, he understood that, you know, if your heart ain't there no more, it's nothing you can do. Like once your heart is gone and your energy is gone then you just got to move on. And that's what it was for me. And I was and like I said, after having that conversation at his crib and, 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 and us three talking for five hours, I said, you know what? I'm willing to give this another shot. It, fe- it felt like a good combo. It felt like a very Shit, productive. We, we were actually talking about coming back that very next day. If, if my uncle didn't pass, we would have. Right. Right. It was a, it felt like it was very productive. It felt like, you know, we had we had met each other at a point and all agreed. And when we got on that air to, that Tuesday and he started saying things, I don't owe my friends respect. It's like, wait, what? I don't even want to be sitting here with this energy because I think that's it's just counterproductive. So let me remove myself and, you know, let things go the way they, they want to go. And like I said, him, you know, I read everything, man. Like, I know what Joe was doing, bringing bringing the homies on to I know what I know what that is fam like I'm not stupid I know what that energy is like I know what that is and you know I laughed at it because I know the relationship that he has with them two Mm. and I know things ain't always and ain't all peachy between them I know I know personal shit and I'm not gonna get into that I know personal history that happened between them so I know it's just like you going so you really gonna sit here and just try to create this optic that oh I could do this with anybody you willing to pull on people that you know you got issues with that you don't really bang with like that to just try to prove a point to me and Rory? And then gonna try to spin it like we abandoned our audience? First of all, you said we're gonna all go to idea? our corners and get right. So and we you, all go on our the corners. Mom tag on it. <laughs> yeah, you put the mum tag on it, but I thought we was all going our corners. You sitting on here recording the show with other people. So it's like, and, all right, fam, you ain't got to. I'm, 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 I'm here with uh, a bunch of dudes that actually want to be here. Yeah, it's, it's like, like yo, stop, it's, it's man. Weird, you, you, you're shit. trying to create these narratives and you're trying to spin shit. And this is like, I'm not. It, it's just weird at this point. It's like, all right, man, let me just detach myself from this. It was a great run. You know, I, I love the, the times we had. It was it was definitely more goods than bads. And I'll give the, you that. Giving the crew that whole narrative to them of, yo, how would how would y'all, isn't that offensive to y'all that yeah, these two would like, abandon this shit? like, stop, abandon man. Abandon this shit. No, stop. this is an agreement upon the three of us. Yeah, we agreed that, okay, we're going to take, and like I said, you put the tag on it that accounting was going to take a month. And I was the over. one that said we could talk about it. And after we had that five-hour conversation a month later, the three of us said, shit, we should have had this week one. We could have had a week one. So I'm the measly, but, I'm the measly one that was trying to do it from rip and just get this shit over with and move no, on. No, 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 no. We could we didn't we we didn't have it week one because like I said. Well he didn't hit me. He, he just texted me and then that was it. He was busy trying he, to create he, me. he was yeah. busy trying to create the narrative that I could sit here and do this with anybody. It's it's just trying to devalue. It's trying to devalue, it's trying to say something, it's trying to spend like I know what that shit is, fam. I'm not stupid. I could play stupid, but I'm not stupid. I know what you're doing. You're going to sit here and try to play, oh, yeah, I could do this with anybody. Da, da, da. No, I know that. Cool. We, I know that that's what you always wanted. You wanted to, to, to move me and Rory out. You was going to try to wait till our contract was over because you know you know I wasn't going for no salary contract. Rory already told you he wasn't. But then now you could bring in two other people that's going to have to roll with the salary contract because they didn't build this show. So yeah. I know I know how you I know how you trying to spin it. I, it's, and it's fine, bro. I don't care about that. I ain't gonna lie, they might have a point. However, who cares? <laughs> that's me though. Uh, of course he can. That's what he wants. <laughs> that's why y'all. That's why y'all didn't own shit. Yeah, you might know the play, but you don't own it. So what could you do? It's like, but you, what you not gonna do? You not gonna sit. If y'all are owed money by Joe, he not giving you shit. Sue that nigga. If you're really owed it, you'll get it in suing. But other than that, hold that fucking L, you bums. About me. Or some crazy shit about me. And if they do, they're lying. So don't do that. You can have your, have your platform. 
And again, I'm not salty. I'll go on and do big numbers. Be great. Be whoever it is that you want to be. I think everyone will be fine. But please do not defamate my character and try to paint me as somebody mm -hmm. that I'm not. Because that's when things are going to go really, really wrong. And I'm not trying to do that. I'm not going to defamate your character. Don't defamate my character. We tried something. We tried to work some business out. It didn't happen. Rory and I know why it didn't happen. So let's just leave it at that, fam, and stop lying to the people, man. Like, give the people the... Well, we gave the people the truth. But then you should give the people the truth as well. Don't sit there and spin no narratives and just lie and create shit. No, fam. This comes down to we have a profit agreement, a percentage-based contract with each other, and every time we asked for accounting, there was a problem. You never wanted to give nobody accounting. You don't want to show us the, the, the real numbers from the deals and all of this other shit. And it's like, all right, fam, what are we doing? Because, again, we have this contract. And if you're not going to honor this contract, like you said in front of other people, then it's like this shit ain't going to work. It's not going to work. And if you don't, like I said, if respect ain't there, I'm not there. No worry, I'm not. Chat. I ain't really got much to say. I ain't even gonna call six nine again. That nigga is a little tweaking right now. Um, to Mealy Maul and Rory, you know, I I had hoped y'all would rest in peace, but clearly y'all are into Walking Dead. Y'all become zombies. Um, I'm glad y'all got y'all little side off. But here's the truth, and here's the reality. People love Joe. Ain't nothing gonna change. Joe could work with anyone. It could be two bums. It could be two stars. People want a Joe Budden podcast, which is anchored by Joe. Y'all going to either create your own shit and show him what y'all were really worth, which I never showed him over six years, or y'all going to sit here and talk about money y'all claim he took from y'all. Y'all don't got to call him a robber, but y'all are basically calling him a thief. He knows that. You're calling him a thief. If you're saying that he's playing with the numbers, didn't give you what you're owed, that's a thief. You're not saying he's ignorant to it. You're saying there is shit going on. You're calling him a thief. Either sue him or shut the fuck up. But also, you're fired, niggas. So you niggas either make a, a podcast and show him that you can pull an audience for the foreseeable future. Not for two weeks when the hype is there. Well, let's see a year later, maybe two. And let's see how your audience compares to what Joe Budden will pull on a Joe Budden podcast. Also, y'all are right. I do think Joe wants to put a bunch of niggas on salary. You know why? It's a Joe Bun podcast. No disrespect to Ice and Ish. No disrespect. Well, actually, all disrespect to Rory and Mealy Maul. Y'all all should be on a salary. Because the only person people care about is Joe. And he could keep introducing people just like Love and Hip Hop do every season. They find a new thought. They find a new producer. They find somebody else with a storyline. They introduce, her, they introduce that person to people. That person go on and get a bunch of bookings and feel like they have a career. But if they never get back on a season of Love & Hip Hop, their career goes to shit. That's just how it goes. All right? Hopefully, I have learned a thing in business. I try to give you the biggest lesson. Not because you're profit participants means you weren't a worker. I had the same thing with Complex. And I would, I would probably say at a bigger degree of percentage than y'all. And I don't think I owned Everyday Struggle. I definitely didn't own Complex. Y'all shouldn't own shit. Y'all were workers. I was a worker at Complex. That's what it is, okay? Learn life. Everybody else, I hope you're having a great Saturday. Chat niggas, I love y'all so much. You know, uh, I think we had 10,000 people up in here tonight. Um, love y'all. Enjoy y'all Saturday. Hopefully, I'll be back tomorrow. Mama is coming over tomorrow. You know, my birthday is on Monday. Mama's coming over tomorrow. She's going to cook up some good food for me. Having some family time. I've been with some really great people who I enjoy recently. Um, but thank y'all. I love y'all. I will be back soon. One thing you should know is as these bums are still unemployed and academics got two jobs for him. Rory could clean my pool. I offer competitive wages and I still got my goddamn landscaping service that needs to be handled by Mealy Mall. Okay, listen, it's only one way fitting to, to get out of this stream chat. Listen, y'all know how we going to do it. You, you should know. Let's get straight to it. Everywhere is five star restaurants, five star. Y'all know, chat. We ain't Jack the Ripper. We don't believe in bringing back the dead. Leave him buried.
Spam it up in the chat. Let me put this back on the screen. 